The world we live in is a facade. Underneath the surface lies the firmament for truth. At the intersection of hidden ascended masters and magical adepts is obsession. Soon the cosmos will die and be reborn. Next time around, the world might be a terrible place, or it could be paradise. Someone gets to decide, and it might as well be you. Belief is power, and if you want to change the world, you better be the one bringing the fork to the table. Welcome to Unknown Armies on Vorpal Tales. I am Eric at Maron Recluse on Twitter, your games master for this terrifying tale series, which concludes today with our current storyline, You. Due to the mature themes of horror and violence explored in our tale, we encourage listener discretion. We are Vorpal Tales, and we play a wide assortment of games, seven days a week that fall into two categories, Awesome Adventures and Terrifying Tales. Be sure to check the calendar on VorpalTales.com to stay up to date with all of our shows. And please check out Atlas Games' suite of tabletop RPGs and board games on atlas-games.com. Where you can get a physical or digital copy of awesome games like On an Armies. Remember to follow Vorpal Tales on Twitch. Visit our website to join uh, the Discord. We're on most major media, social media outlets, including YouTube, where you can catch up to previous episodes. So remember to follow, subscribe, and hit the bell to get all the updates. Vorpal Tales is also on Drive Through RPG, by the way. Check out some of our very own uh, Vorpal Tales supplements that include characters, monsters, and scenarios made for many of the games that we play weekly. We want to thank Atlas Games for making awesome games for us to play and for providing support to their players. Also, a special thanks to Astral's Tabletop, the enchilada burrito of online tabletop gaming. Special credit shoutouts go also to Nocturnum, spelled N-C-T-R-N-M, for the use of their song Driveway Mix 2. Dark Somnium Music, Least Supper Bound, and Repulsive Sound for their tracks as well. Check out more awesome tunes at nocturnum.bandcamp.com, secretpress.bandcamp.com, as well as on YouTube, Instagram, and SoundCloud under Repulsive Sound. Also, very special thanks to our resident rock stars at Nate Mid and our producer Corey for helping to design our awesome character sheets for Astral. And lastly, but not least, a warm thanks to our listeners and fans for tuning in. Our adepts and avatars of the underground are here and ready to bring their fork to the table. Players, tell our audience who you are, where they can find you online, and who you will be playing this afternoon. Beginning with Key. Yes, hello, I am Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama, and today I will be playing Lucius. John. Hello, I am J3 Billion, um, otherwise known as John. I currently don't know if it's Lucius or not. Um, and I will be playing Mr. Sean Krogan Fjord. Alan? Hey guys, I'm Alan, your Eldritch Keeper, and today I'll be playing Damien Darkwood. Ace? Or sorry, Mike. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Leader. Uh, you can find me online at Dr. Fusion with the Z. I'll be playing everyone's least favorite comedian, Jace. Last but not least, uh, Corey. Hey there, I'm Corey, aka Narf on the interwebs, and uh, today I will be playing Jesse, the Mechanomancer Automata. Excellent. Now for a very short recap of what happened previously. Wizzy and Eve62 are night taggers, graffiti artists who have been proliferating their signatures throughout Seattle for the better part of a year. Both have been undoing the other's tags for that time. Both are urbanomancers and were once the protégés to another such city mage who was part of the Occultus Familia. That was until their teacher was killed by the Black Magic Mafia group after they disagreed to help with the likes of Frank Gordon achieve his goals to end the world. Eustace Crane explained all of this and more to the rest of the group, elaborating on how he and his trio of former Familia adepts have been reticent to approach Wizzy's home due to it being monitored by them. The team offered to help, but first Damien needed to be dropped off somewhere to charge up. Sophia fired up her sniper rifle uh, and shot into the, a sitting car full of Familia adepts, but was unable to breach the bulletproof glass. Alerted, they began to move and attempt to find their shooter while Jace rang the doorbell to Wizzy's house. He answered in a bathrobe and a sawed-off shotgun. The fool's luck came into play and Jace narrowly avoided losing his midsection from a shotgun blast that blew the door to pieces. Sophia fired her sniper rifle into the, sitting, uh, into the car again. Uh, and... 
Uh, in the, and then, meanwhile, over the skies of Wyoming, thinking Gordon might be using Sean's phone to track them, Lucius threw it out the window while in mid-flight before the avatar of the warrior could, could react. Jesse, Lucius, and Sean landed in Wyoming to refuel. Knowing that his son may be out there, Sean decided to go solo into militia territory to find him. Jesse warned that Jackson may already be gone, however, and, insi and insisted uh, that he take uh, the treant with him. Sean maintained that he had to be sure and left. Going into the woods, Sean found the compound and used some well-placed explosives to create a diversion. He slipped in and made his way down to the bowels of the bunker. After subduing a guard mo mopping the floors of a recently occupied prisoner cell, Sean found William's old pocket watch and a body with a sheet over them. When he uncovered the body, he came face to face with Frank Gordon's corpse. Lucius scribbled into his notebook in an attempt to understand what was happening. He and Jesse got into a discussion about the limits of his belief powers. Lucius said that he remembered having attempted to disbelieve La Llorona on the beach that fateful night, and his power wasn't enough, causing him to disappear from reality. Jesse posited, though, that his this power was dependent on the level of belief that is being pitted against his own. La Llorona had many people believe in her, so this was how she manifested, after all. Maybe it simply wasn't enough in the end, and the power backfired, writing him out of reality. Lucius contends that he initially believed that either she was not real and would disappear, or that he was mad. Maybe it was that she believed harder than me, or maybe it was I, that I believed in myself. I don't want to talk about it. Back in Seattle, Jace turned and ran back towards the car as Ella used her oniromancy against Wizzy to no effect. Sophia emptied the rest of her rifle's magazine, but didn't seem to affect Wizzy in the least. Also, he didn't appear to bleed or exude emotion. The team raced down the street and were stopped by the occultist Depths. Jay successfully suppressed a few with his sidearm while Ella put another to sleep on the sidewalk. Eustace used his chaos magic to escape the rest of the adepts, with one of Pitromancer getting unerringly close to digging their fingers into Jace's neck as they turned the corner. Stopping to pick up Sophia, the team left the neighborhood and went to retrieve Damien. Time for plan B. Back at the compound, so Sean switched outfits with the unconscious guard and rigged a grenade to blow in the cell containing Frank Gordon's body. The explosion caused everyone in the compound to become alerted. Looking around the camp during the chaos, he only found Jackson's effects, but no sign of him. He whistled for the Treant to light a truck on fire after he rigged it to drive towards the defense line. They proceeded to light the other buildings on fire as Sean made an escape back into the woods. The militia, consumed with destroying the Treant, were unable to slow or stop Sean's egress. Back in Seattle, the team decided to reach out to Eve by targeting a fancy restaurant in downtown and tagging it with Wizzy's signature markings after a little late-night shoplifting inside a hardware store for supplies. Jace attempted to connect with Eve, but she didn't trust him from the start and decided to run instead. When Eustace attempted to halt her, part of some loose masonry atop a building fell on top of him. After giving the rest of the team the slip, they decided it was time for some waffles and cigarettes at 2 in the morning. After finally landing late in the evening, Jesse and Lucius drove in to join, uh, to join them. They talked about their meeting with the sleepers and how they're willing to help restore new Lucius's memories if they share information about to them about Gordon's whereabouts since their agendas align. Jace was charitable with the local homeless community outside the 24-hour diner and shortly received a call at the front desk phone. It's Eve. It's this being her city, she was watching and listening to the team ever since she disappeared from sight earlier. Jace explained who they are and how they want to help Wizzy get from underneath the familia. She proposes to meet them by the riverside tomorrow in the afternoon. Back in the Wyoming wilderness, Sean blended into the forest and waited until the danger had passed before communicating with the rest of the cabal. They arranged for him to rent a car and drive into Seattle overnight. Upon arriving, he collapsed from exhaustion until the very next morning during breakfast. Jace retold his and Damien's misadventures with Gus at the Familia Mansion. During this, Damien motions to Jace from behind Sean not to talk about the dead young man they found in the basement. Blunt as usual, Jace tells Sean all the details. Seeing how Sean is in rare good spirits to see Jesse and the gang, Damien didn't respond and promptly left the motel room. 
Remembering the number Angela Forsyth from the sleepers gave them back at the snake pit, Sean has decided to call her. She makes the observation that something has changed with the proxy ritual. Did you kill Frank Gordon? She asked. No, but I will soon, Sean responded. Be careful, she said. There's no knowing what can happen if he's inhabiting the body of your ancestor or your child. During the conversation, Jesse pondered if he could create another Gus, causing Jace to do a spit take. He wants a replacement, doesn't he? I can't answer the reason. The more I think about it, the more I think we should make another Gus. Sean heard this and thought that in order to get out from under Gordon's proxy, he would need to become more like Gus, a repairer instead of a destroyer. When the topic of abandonments inevitably came up, Jesse asked if they could use their powers to locate anyone. Eustace replied by saying that they can do so, but they typically need the person's true name. When it's asked if anyone there knows Gus's real name, most said no and laughed it off. Jesse and Sean both said yes simultaneously. They made the collective decision to use one of the Urbanomancer's powers to find Gus as the first order of business. After the call, Sean slept in while everyone else headed out to meet with Eve. On the way, Jace noticed Damien's sullen silence and attempted to broach the subject with conversation. Penny for your thoughts, or buckshot in my pockets for your thoughts, Jace offered. I think I figured out who we found in that basement, Damien replied. Wait, you don't think it's... Damien nodded solemnly. I don't think he was bluffing. Remember, he has a death mage. They get their power from sacrifices. Sacrifices that are significant to the caster, as well as anyone else uh, attending the ritual. Who might have participated in a ritual with the Thanatomancer? Frank Gordon. All right. So, we laughed less off. Uh, every Sean was completely exhausted from having to pull an all-nighter driving from Wyoming into Seattle. And the rest of the team was uh, dead set on meeting with this Urbanomancer during the daytime uh, near the riverfront. Did any of you take any precautions before heading down there? Um, I will say, because uh, Alan was not here last week, uh, Damien is um, really, really hurt. <laughs> His whole body is aching. Uh, he has taken a significant amount of damage uh, throughout the course of the last couple of days and has only healed a little bit on, naturally on his own. Sean is about halfway. He's like, <laughs> he took a lot of uh, punishment as well, as did most of you. Although the, the one I think that was the least affected is probably Jesse. Uh, Jace wouldn't take any precautions whatsoever. He never really does. It's just kind of against his whole grain of things. Uh, he has he has the gun, and he has himself, and he has these four pe these three people. So he's pretty much confident they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So they're in mortal danger. <laughs> uh, am I with the rest of the group, or am I still at the hotel? I thought you were sleeping it off. You're still at the hotel. You were, like right. made a phone call to the sleepers, and you went, "All right, I'm out." <laughs> Passed yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> I think my exact words. To Lucius was before he left. Where, uh, yeah, help me be more not like my father. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> uh, yeah. What are the extent of the damage? Um, it's just a culmination of like all the different things that you've experienced uh, with Jace and everybody. Uh, like at the Cultist Familia Mansion, like all the gunplay and the accidents and things that were going on like you you are, are just like bleary eyed and like everything hurts right now all right painkillers you could take some painkillers yeah yep. it'll kill the the negatives you would normally get from being in that kind of condition unless yeah. you spent some uh, and i'll say that because you took some time actually to just gain charges you have an additional uh significant charge you have a significant charge buddy all right Uh, let's see here. All right. Uh, unless anybody ha had any specific things that you wanted to do, you, you, I'm assuming the majority of you ride together in like Jesse's Jeep that he's driving in from the, uh, the private airstrip. Sure, that sounds and, better. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, 
he's driving presumably you drive up on the riverside they, she gave you a specific place to meet her by and it's basically just a an overlook uh you see like you know uh ships going in and out whatever um she's not alone though there's somebody else who's with her in a big bomber jacket and like a scully cap um can't see who they are but they they sort of tower over her and they're kind of le- just leaning against the railing there this is like in an old empty lot behind like an abandoned factory or some sort okay old warehouse. Makes sense. We, we might want to go with this a little slow i don't want to um, scare her with all of us at once um would you mind if i talk to her first and then call you guys over sure okay. i already right. scared her once i don't want to scare her again <laughs> She remembers you, and, and for good reasons this time. So you can you can approach her normally. You don't have to like be uh, too care too cautious. About She's expecting no. you after all. So Jason's going to be cautious. He's, he'll walk right up to them. He's just making sure that uh, they don't freak out because there are three of there are four of them and two of them. So <laughs> yeah, Understand. I'll wait at like the end of the hallway and like at the edge of eyesight. You know, like at the all edge right. of the alley or something. All right, fair enough. Let's see. All right. So, so you uh, not you trying to hide, her. just not approaching, just All making right, that well. clear. They notice you pull up. You know, uh, you step out and go go to speak with them, Jace. Yeah, I'll walk Seems right up like without any, without any fear or concern whatsoever. Thanks for taking time to talk to us. Can I hate? I don't. I don't. I, I, don't, I didn't want to invite my friends over until I made it cl- uh, made sure it was okay with you before I did that. Yeah, sure, no problem, she says. And, like, she motions over to the guy who's next to her, like, leaning on the railing. It's like, uh, let me get you introduced. And he's like, um, Will. And he kind of turns around. You see, you look at him, and you don't recognize this guy at first. And then you look again, and you're like, oh, shit, that was the guy from the house with the shotgun. It's Except this time, it's really him. It's William Barkley, a.k.a. Wizzy, the other Urbanomancer. Oh! Oh! Wow! Okay. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta like tense Seems for a like moment. Shocked. Like, oh shit! That guy tried to kill me just a little while ago, <laughs> like yesterday. It's that quick, like uh oh no, okay, not the crazy-eyed version I saw earlier. <laughs> so I'll, I'll wait. For, I'll motion for everyone to come over. Just kind of man up, and you can come over. Yeah. Head over that way. Uh, well, uh, glad glad to meet you. Uh, this time. Oh, did you meet? Did you meet the other me? He says. Yeah, I, I, I we had a close and personal uh, doorstep interaction. It wasn't uh, as good as I hoped it would be. That wasn't me. Sorry. He's like that was the that was the familia. They have all kinds of adepts under their control, including mechanomancers. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what I gathered after I almost took a shotgun to the face. But uh, understandable. We we we've, we've we've come to help you. Uh, I'll introduce the How rest of my friends. To help? <laughs> well, we got quite a few of us here, and not just uh, the three others you see, uh, who uh, have a beef with, uh, they call this Familia, and Frank Gordon. And we know you're tied into this, and we want to get you free, so it'll, it'll shut down their plans. Did you tell Eustace and his trio of adepts to follow you down here, or did you exclude them from these from this meeting? I didn't say they couldn't come. I never I never okay. would, tell, would tell them that. So if they wanted to follow along, I'd they probably them. followed, yeah. They, they'll stay back and let you do the talking. <clears throat> but yeah, Eustace is just kind of leaning on the car and he kind of looks at him like, I know that guy. Yeah, we've, we've got we've got plenty of support here to help with that and a lot of experience. So we just wanted to, we, we weren't expecting to talk to you or expecting to talk to, talk to Eve here because I, I thought that she'd be the person to help get you free. I didn't know that you'd be available to talk to us or even want to. They're keeping, yeah, he's like, we're going to need all the help we can get. If we're going up against the Familia, Gordon has people of his own. I almost gave up the ghost if it wasn't for Eve here. She found me out there, said, we might as well keep this going, this whole back and forth between ourselves on the streets, just to, to kind of buy ourselves some time. I'm glad I agreed to it. They kind of nodded each other. And that makes sense. He was like, uh, like, yeah, we... Urban, we can do a lot as Urbana, as city mages, but we can't locate individual people. We can locate groups. We can give inform- we can get information about any number of people living in the city, our city. But when it comes to finding individual people like that, it's difficult to, to, to do. But it's like, but if you all 
are you adepts as well? And she like her eyes scan over the the trio of mages. That we're a, come with we're you. a wide selection of adepts <laughs> and and avatars and all of the fun stuff. Avatars. She points her eyes. Um, wow, that's hard to explain, but uh, it, it's a long story. Um, yeah, uh, Damien uh, is pretty much one of the best at locating folks that I've ever seen. And uh, so with more data, he can probably answer your questions with that and help you figure out how to find the right people at the right time, in the right places. He's good at that. Really good at that. You see, Wizzy just kind of like crosses on and is like, all right, now slow your roll for a second. Nothing ever happens in the underground without a deal. What is, what's in this for you exactly? What's your beef with Frank Gordon? Frank Gordon kidnapped and we think may have already killed a friend of uh, the son of a friend of ours who is currently sleeping off a very long drive uh, or otherwise he'd be here. And uh, Frank's Frank's messed with everyone, everybody here in our, in our group of people enough to where we want him, we want to see him dead. And of course he's trying to end the world. Kind of an important thing to me. I like to keep the world here. So uh, definitely a big beef there. We had a run in with the occultist familia. We had no idea they were allied with Frank and uh, Damien and I barely got out of their out of their house alive. Hmm. Yeah, they got my son too. I don't know where they're keeping him. I suspect it's that big mansion they got just on the outskirts of town. Like, there's no going in back into that place, though. That place is a fucking fortress. I don't know. Once you get out, you can't get back in. But, um,. I get the sinking feeling that uh, it's not going to be easy to get you free from their clutches, but we're going to try. Did you mention at all that uh, what happened to Gus, to Eve, or, or to Wizzy? I haven't gotten to that yet. Oh, okay. I just was about to say something. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. When, we were, when Damien and I were in there with a friend of ours, Gus, um, he didn't make it out, and we haven't heard from him since. We don't know and we can't get in touch with them, so we're we're kind of concerned about him as well. Don't tell them what they might have done to him by now. Like Gus a, is um, Gus is a tough entity. We'll just put it at that. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> we got some pretty tough hombres in that place too. All right. So it sounds like we both have something that we need from each other. You need help getting your friend Gus back. You got beef with Gordon. We've got beef with Gordon. They got my son. Like we can try, and he's like, we can try to locate them and get them out. I suspect that they're still at the mansion. That's a fair call. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that to, to Damien to talk with you about how we can we can locate your son and see if he's actually at the mansion. He's got ways to do that. Sure, I'll talk to anybody who can who can help me reunite with my son. Damien, Wizzy, Wizzy, Damien. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Considering. You got a ways to find people out here? Yeah. What's your son's name? David. David? Do you have a picture? Yeah. He fishes his wallet out of the pocket. He shows he's like six years old. Pull out my cell phone. All right. Get on Google. And, um, I take a picture of the picture mm. and I use the picture search <laughs> from Google. Yeah. And I and I, I, I add where's David? I'm feeling lucky. Mm-hmm. And I I'm spend a sig- and I spend <laughs> a significant charge. Oh yeah. Bing. So like all sorts of stuff comes up when you do that. But when you check, it's only when you check into like the maps tab do you see that like it randomly brings up like david's you know deli or whatever like just a couple miles outside of town you know and on the way to like that big place uh, you know you absolutely were just that just a few days ago that being the uh, occultist familiar mansion so he is at the mansion it most certainly seems that way yes after a significant charge you're pretty certain that's exactly where the, it's pulling you towards yeah you, you when you tab over it's like the images it shows you like David's Deli, I, you know, 30 miles outside of town and shows you like surrounding areas and uh, places of interest and it shows you the fucking house. He's at the mansion. Yeah, that's what I thought. He's like, 
I, I don't know what kind of firepower you're, you're bringing, but assaulting a place like that is really dangerous. Yeah. You got a, any ideas? You got a plan? Hmm. <laughs> you see well, Go ahead. It's going to be a group effort for the plan, so we're going to need to meet up with everybody and talk about that. Yeah, we're at this, and I'm working that out because um, I'm not allowed to plan, plan things. Yeah. You're a, you're a voice behind you from uh, Eustace. I couldn't help but overhear. You're planning. You're, need to, uh, <laughs> you're talking maybe. about making a plan to assault the mansion. <laughs> no offense, but you're dealing with two body bags. He says, and he points himself into Damien. Planning is not exactly in the car. We sort of, we're, he's like, we, we, we sort of play the uh, jazz variety of magic. We just sort of make it up as we go. And it's like, that sounds like a good way to get yourself killed. He's like, you have any better ideas, bright eyes? Lizzie's like, you can bring them out to us. We can, if you bring them out into the city, they're dead. And he's like, I'm going to know that. Yeah, it's like, but yeah, if it, it's like, yes, but if you lead them back in, they're going to know exactly who's trying to catfish them. And that's not going to, you know, that's not going to uh, present you with your son now, is it? They're likely keeping him in a very secure location within that mansion. We can make something like this happen. We can make a reunion happen very soon. We're just going to need a little bit of a distraction to get everybody's attention drawn away from you. So oh, what, what what if we what if we stage um, a quote unquote fight between Eve and Wizzy with none of us supporting Eve and that will hopefully draw them into the city center, at least enough away from the mansion that the rest of us can get into the mansion and get your son. Oh, you're proposing that they stage a fight between themselves inside the city. Yes, yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Um, you see, they both kind of look at each other and they nod. <laughs> like, this is a little secret that they've kept to themselves that the occultist familiar are not aware of, and you can absolutely capitalize on it. So, yeah, they're like, yeah, you know, that's not a half bad idea. They're looking for me, was he says, so why not just put it out there that I'm here? Draw them in. We can, we can lure them into a trap. We can both hit them at the same time, and then you could use that moment to go into the mansion and get, get your friend back and my son out. We can take the four of us, our media team, into the mansion and uh, used to have you and your people back up Eve and, and Wizzy, causing enough causing enough problems out here. I think we could pull that off. <laughs> you see, uh, Eustace is like, yeah, it sounds just chaotic enough that I think it could work. And he's like, right, we had a deal then. What are, he's like, um, assuming we, you succeed, um, where are we supposed to reunited after after we finished with them it's like we still have to deal with frank gordon and what they're planning we have no uh, idea where they're at if we get your son you need to pick a place where we can meet you what's safe for you they give you a location on the the other side of town or whatever it's like you know they they know the city inside and out so they have like various places that they could lead you to to that they could be safe from any sort of scrying or whatever it's like yeah meet us at the it's on this basement over here, uh, underneath this old pub. It's like we'll meet there. Okay. Okay. It, it's titled "The End of the World Cafe" or something like that. Some like old beatnik. How, how, uh, how appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So they you make this uh, this plan between your groups to basically lure the help lure the occultist familia into the city to go find Wizzy. Uh, they're going to get ambushed by Eustace's people while you slip into the mansion. Who's uh, undertaking this particular suicide uh, job? I mean, uh, adventure. I had to go into the mansion to retrieve two, potentially two hostages. I thought the four of us, we the five of us, we the, we the best group for that. Mm. That way we're all together. Splitting us okay. up puts us in a lot of danger. We know we know. Are you now. going to, yeah, are you going to wait another day for Sean to be fully uh, recuperated or are you going to Yeah, we're going to wait till, we're gonna wait till the next day until until both Sean and Damien are, are feeling better. All right, fair enough. So you make a plan, 
the you exchange uh, communication like you know it gives you the like a cell phone number that you can call on a burner phone mm-hmm. uh, for Wizzy and Eve <clears throat> and you make arrangements for the both of you to meet up after the fact at the uh, the finale we'll call it cafe and uh, yeah that works for me uh, they're like all right first thing tomorrow then we're gonna stage a fight overnight and that'll draw them out there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of chaos downtown. It's like, if you want to coordinate it right, what time do you want to try to slip into the mansion? Well, you used to work there, Eustace. What's the what's the best time to get in there uh, for shift changes and whatnot? Mm-hmm. He thinks about it for a second. He's like, most of their shift changes happen at night. That's usually when they conduct most of their business. So probably overnight would be the best time. Maybe wait until tomorrow evening. Say 7.30. Time it is, he says. You see, Wizzy's like, "All right, this sounds like a plan to me." And him and uh, Eve look at each other and like, "All right," and she, they kind of nod. He's like, "Hey, nice working with you. Hope you make it out alive." Yeah, hopefully we'll see you both very soon. All right. So you meet back up with the rest of the group. You inform them what's going on. Does anybody have anything else to add? Sean, you're included in this, by the way, because I'm assuming you wait until you go back to the hotel and then kind of disgusting uh yeah um if you guys tell me the plan then i will inform the sleepers of the plan um and i will give her a call up and i'll uh, tell her that the what's going on we're getting some of the there was a cultist familiar uh some of the cultists familiar are helping us stage stage a fight to siege the cultists familiar home base. That's probably where Frank Gordon is. Uh, Frank Gordon has apparently co-opted, coerced, made an agreement with the cultists with the parts of the cultist familia and uh that is currently where he's setting up his base any help would be appreciated you tell that to forsyth yeah you leave a voicemail uh later on you receive a call back and she's like you need you need assistance against the occultist familia uh frank gordon is with occultus familia we believe that we are we believe that the two are working together hmm. i have something that may be of use to you and your people it may help to keep you safe absolutely it's a one-time trick but it, so it won't last at least it'll buy you some time at least until we can organize our people to move in it's like uh, we've been eyeing that enclave in in uh in the northwest for some time but we've had up until now at least we've had a very straightforward arrangement with the familia which is news to any of you because like you notice that like this is an organized crime adepts and the sleepers are the people that like put a the pillow in your face and pull the trigger you know they, they they police the the mages and such uh, if they get out of hand so there's a sort of a they, they, she seems to be um uh, indicating that there's like a sort of like this unspoken rule or agreement between both organizations that kind of stay out of each other's way. Um, but apparently that's going to go out the window soon, given what they've agreed to with Frank Gordon and how this is you know, news to them and such. And the so world's going to end, so... Uh, yeah, so, you know, all those uh, old alliances <laughs> are going to fucking fuck all. Uh, she's like, thank you for this information, Mr. Fjord. I um I suggest that the next time you make your way towards them before you go to the their mansion, that you stop at the local metro. There's a locker room there. If you look, if you go to the back, uh, there's a there's a uh, there's a locker that has been untouched for something like thirty years. When you undo the lock, there's going to be a container inside. Inside that container can are trinkets that can help you and your cabal 
deal with these adepts. Mind you, while you have these things on you, you yourself will not be able to use your uh, supernatural abilities if you're an adept. So this may be important to know for your body bag that you carry around with you. But they also will not be able to affect you with their magics as well. Good to know. Uh, be mindful. Thank, thank you for the help. They have. It's not an. an <laughs> these trinkets are not um, easy to make, and they uh, disappear quite easily. They're only of limited use to you, so don't push your luck. She says. Fair enough. We got somebody in the party that does that for us. <laughs> it's like it's good, been good working with you. Uh, until the end of the world, he says, I'll be sending some people <laughs> to Seattle soon, and hopefully they'll be making contact with you soon enough to put an end to this uh, Frank Gordon business. Until the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Click. So she gives you a location to find some things that can be of use to you if you want to go check it out. Absolutely. Who's going? Uh, myself. I will. You? I'm the sleepless right, driver, cool. so you know I'll just drive everywhere. <laughs> All right, you drive these these two uh, down to this uh, railway station. It's uh, long been abandoned um, for the most part, and uh, you go to like the you go through the hallways, and it's like just dirt and trash everywhere, and like uh, graffiti on the walls and stuff like that. Uh, you make your way towards the back, and you see like. There's something about this place that had like makes your hair stand up for some reason. Like there's something magical here. You can probably tell. Like so, there's a significant amount of, you don't know if it's a ley line or what, but you all get this like you get the heebie-jeebies when you're walking through the door. Um, give me a notice check. Absolutely. Everyone or. Um... What's that? Do I notice as well? Uh, if you make it, yeah, you can make you can make a roll. Or actually, you could roll. Um, you can roll your um, aura sight. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. If one of them is better than the other. Could I use my hunting, tracking, and such? Or a side is good. Is that too much of a stretch? Too much of a stretch oh. in this particular case. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <clears throat> we got a 50, 55 under 67. Excellent. Uh, okay. 22, something... if that helps. Oh, that's good. That's a max success. Uh, so you both, yeah, you both get max success. Oh, yeah, successes. me too. Damn. Oh, did you yeah, really? So, Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> So you come through, and this whole place is abandoned. It's shadowy. There's no lights here, so you have to use like your cell phone cam or whatever, or a flashlight to look around. You go into the, the main locker room area, and it's like these lockers. All of them have been haven't been used in, like decades. Some of them like rusted over. Uh, most of them don't have a lock on them, except for one, and that you notice as you as the light shines over them towards the back. But as soon as you walk into the main area where these lockers are located. You get this like foreboding sense, and when you look around, you actually see the shadows moving towards the back rear wall. What are you doing, uh, Damien? Specifically, though, uh, you notice that whatever whatever this thing is, uh, it lives in these shadows, and it it moves very very um, very quickly, and it seems and almost like insect like. Let's hurry. <laughs> Let's do this quick. Oh, quick and dirty it is. Yeah, you're like, you're looking around and stuff like that, and you see the, as you're walking in, like you see the thing starts to sort of like come down from the walls. The shadow seems to kind of coalesce, and they appear to be like these little caterpillars, spiders, you're not sure. They're quite large. 
How large? And like the like you know the size of your hand. Ew. There's many of them, and they should be drawn towards you like moths to a flame. Really? So if I move the flashlight, it gets it, it's attracted. Oh, it's not attracted to the light. It's attracted to you. To you. Okay. Shit. To Damien? All of you. All of us. And if I these like, like claw like appendages and legs, like they kind of skitter, like they appear to have like this chitinous black skin, almost like matte, non reflective when you shine the light on them directly. And you see, like towards the back, uh, and this is something you picked up on uh, with your hunter skill, so to speak, uh, Sean. You smell death here. You smell like old rotting corpses lying down here. And these <laughs> things that are there are hanging around them like carrion. Uh, anyone who has a mages. cult, <laughs> anyone who has a cult can roll. Does it include like an adept identity? Mm, no, this doesn't correspond to chaos magic or anything like that. You can roll knowledge if you have knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is good. Fifty-seven over sixty-five. These are called tenebra, and they basically hang out anywhere near dead corpses, mainly ones that were unloved or unmissed in the back alleys and. Uh, side uh, areas of, the, of a city. They travel in packs, and they often work best when they're in complete darkness. They can attack anyone or anything in their vicinity, and they love feeding on off of uh, psychic misery of the dead. Or start moving towards you. What do you do? All right, I suggest we pull back quickly. You see that they're like <laughs> now <laughs> <try> to... <laughs> as, in, as in let's go so i, I pulled john uh, we, get, we get the hell out of there but we're gonna need to come back with floodlights floodlights okay <laughs> excellent uh, are we sure we can outrun this thing yeah There's... good question roll fitness please <laughs> <laughs> they are quite fast. I run fitness too. Oh. We roll exactly 50? Damn. Yeah, is that good? That's good. You, you want to roll on or below? Yeah. So okay. You got it right on the money. <laughs> You're running. What about you, Damien? Oh, hell no. Oh, shit. <laughs> do you have a reroll? Uh, do I have a reroll? Yes, I do. I got four rerolls. Do you? Oh, okay. You want to use one now? Yes. <laughs> okay, go for it. So I'm gonna use them if you got them. It's the finale. Jesse, you uh, you. you I'm good. Fifty-two under fifty-five. Oh, whew. okay, you got it. So you managed to stay just a step ahead as these things are like, like crawling towards you, and then like crawling on the walls and like the, like hanging down on the ceilings to try to grab them. One of them jumps five feet straight up in the air. And the one like launches itself like 10, 12 feet and like kind of like latches onto the wall and tries to like, like try to draw, grab out to you with the pincers. And you're like, ugh, there's to get away just in time. You can feel like their antenna on like the, like brushing up against your neck as oh. like trying to move away. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, nope, nope, nope. You're like, get the hell out of there. <laughs> uh, Jesse, were you waiting outside? <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, I'm going with, I found a way to uh, plug myself into the Jeep's uh, power supply thing, so I'm like, <laughs> just like charging. It. Yeah, I'm like sitting in the car waiting for him. Charging up. Yeah. You, they come running out, and they're like, oh, like doing that, you know? It's like they have it's flying like, cockroach or something like dropped on them. There's a, there's a fly, it's like a Terminator flap skin sort of situation. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like that. I yell out the window, is this a gun situation? <laughs> this is a get the fuck out situation. Oh, all right. I'll like throw open the doors for him. Light, high beams. Light, high. Now. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I'll flip on the high beams and uh, spin the car to point at him. Hmm. You pull, pull, you point the high beam on them, and they kind of recede back into the building. All right. You know, um, need to get right. some floodlights. I, alternatively, or also, also, um, Jesse, do you have aluminum powder and uh, was it rust? Uh, can't remember the. Rust. the can't remember the, uh, rust. Yes, iron oxide. Iron oxide. We need iron oxide and rust. You want to do termite? <laughs> it's very bright. Something it's incredibly that's very bright. bright. You want to take it inside? Or we could Excellent. do. Okay. Or we could find some mer mercury shavings and burn that. You know that the light is is not just going to hamper their ability to work best together. They're not exactly afraid of the light. Uh, they don't go out into the light because they don't, you know, work very well under those conditions. Essentially, in game terms, they would get negatives to hit you or to do anything effectively in bright light. They can still attack you. Also, um, Mr. Chaos Mage, uh, do you have a way of burning the bodies? Mm. Yeah, they're feeding off of that dead corpse back there. Not really. <clears throat> but we... Mm. It's abandoned, right? Yeah. For the most the, part. It, John, it, are it, you it, proposing it, on destroying things again? <laughs> I'm so like your father. No, the no, no. no. <laughs> The Not building that it's part of is also abandoned. Yeah, the whole thing is just like it's laid waste. It's got like moss growing up the side of the building and shit. See, really, Me. this act of destruction. Oh, sorry, I was gonna go off on a tangent here. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, worst case scenario, we could Molotov the place. I mean, yeah, yeah. but I would that draw would also probably yourself. burn up the stuff in there. Here, well, they could do controlled Molotovs. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, controlled fire. Okay. While they're talking controlled about fire. all this stuff, I'll toss the little digger robot that I made that all it knows how to do is <laughs> dig. And I'll tell it to go back there and find the thing in the really old uh, and bring it out to us. Is that going to work? Yeah, because there's a it's it's inside of a locker and there's an actual lock on it. You have to break the lock mm -hmm. open, get the thing out. Well, the, all, this all robot the can dig. Yeah, I was gonna say it is a digger robot. You want to try to dig through the roof of the building or something? No, like, no, like uh, <laughs> be there a while. Just like the locker door. Yeah, I mean, how strong <laughs> is the locker door? I don't know. Uh, it's old, it's rusted, so... But it's I just want to see if they give a shit about it. Either way. No, they don't give a shit about what's inside the... You mean the... The, the digger the, robot. The oh. I do mean, they even know... Care. Do they even... Do the, do the Tenebra not even notice, like, or try to interfere with it? No, I would imagine not, just because it's not alive, so it's not giving off any, like, psychic, you know... Uh, energy that I can beat oh. off. All right, I'll try. I'll, not dead. So. I'll I'll, uh, I'll spend a minor charge oh, to um, try to add a, a cutting ability to the digger robot. Excellent nice. idea. You so it has like a blowtorch or something yeah. on there, like just kind of. That's cool. All right, nice. So you see, Jesse's like, I think I got this. He starts tinkering with the bot, sends it in, it kind of crawls in. Fifteen minutes later. You hear like smoke and like something clanging down uh, onto the floor and eventually it comes clattering back out and it's in, in its pincers it are, is like this um this little box it's like an old cigar case i'm not touching that <laughs> uh yeah i'll go and grab it um grab you probably it. shouldn't because Apparently, this does fuck all for your kind, and it makes you do fuck all. So don't touch it. And What's the range? Do we know? What sort of what? I'm sorry. What's the range of effect from those trinkets? It was. I mean, do I have uh, to actively touch it in personal, order to nullify my ability? Personal protection. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, but if you, I, you open the box? <laughs> I don't. I do not okay. open the box. You're like, fuck the sleepers. This might be a trap. Uh, you open up the the box, Sean. And I step back. Yeah, I'll step a couple <laughs> paces away from both <laughs> Jesse and Damien. <laughs> Yeah, you step like back. My and... <laughs> my shit's as far as I know, my shit's not magical. It's just the will of the universe. So I'm going to on the open. street. There's some guy pushing his his cart, looking at you, uh, but like four, like uh, three grown ass men, like oh shit, what's in the box? I don't know. <laughs> like <laughs> he shakes his head, keeps pushing his cart. Uh, Does he you, look homeless? Uh, oh yeah, there's in this part of town, especially there's there's. I give him a, I give him forty bucks. Oh, gee, thanks, mister. Move Much along. Appreciated. All right. <laughs> um, you uh, you pop the top to the cigar case open, and you see, like, it's filled with teeth. Well, teeth. Fucking magic bullshit. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> There's a note inside. It's old, old piece of, piece of uh, paper. In just note. one, good for 30 minutes. Don't overdo it. Ingest one? Mm -hmm. hmm. Teeth of various sizes. How many? Oh, wonderful. All right. How many teeth? It's not your digestive system is going to love it. Trust me. Mm. But <laughs> how many How many teeth are in the box? Dozens. All right. That was par for the fucking course. I'm gonna shut the box. All right, you're Put just it. like you get a shutter looking at that shit. You're just like, ooh, that's that's wrong. That's yeah, that's wrong. no, no, that's I, I don't want to know what those teeth are. <laughs> I'm gonna shut it. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna pointedly not think about ingesting that, which I'm going to have to do at some point, and then Probably just was. <laughs> put it in like put it in the truck as gingerly as possible. <laughs> It's not dynamite, all right? Like, it's fine. <laughs> Fair. Um, <laughs> okay. What do you do after yeah, that? I'm going to go... I'm going to go and... Go back to the... Uh, uh, hotel room? Uh, a motel. Motel room. Uh, I I guess I will go and I want to make some Molotovs. Oh, um, <laughs> not like you're dead at all. Sure, okay. Uh, Pulling up burning I mean, shit. <laughs> you just did that too at the GLS compound. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be like him, but at the I'm same just time, secretly, I'm just secretly, secretly taking notes here for the proxy, you know. Oh, oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, make some thermite. Well, thermite's gonna burn through stuff. If we want light, it's different. Oh, yeah, if you want light, it's more mercury based, or not mercury? Yeah, mercury. No, magnesium. 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 That's the one, M word I'm looking for. Phosphorus. Phosphorus. Yeah. All right, so you're, can... you're trying to, you know, you're trying to put together explosives and things like that in a, in a motel room with what you got. <laughs> I mean, I look well. in the Pepsi crate. Are there any? Are there any? Are there any? Are there like any a, uh, park park grenades maybe. left? There's maybe like one old like Russian grenade in there. You can take it. You can try taking it apart at, in, at your own peril. Uh, you know, it's like a thirty-year-old grenade or whatever. <laughs> Oh dear God! I'm also gonna get an axe. Okay, like a fire axe or like a yeah, fire axe. I'm gonna get a fire cool. axe. Cool. Echoes and then... like session one with the uh, axe murder. <laughs> I'm emulating all of these great people. Fantastic I know, right? People to emulate. <laughs> They're my heroes. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna have like axes and some Molotovs, and 
I'm going to give the Molotovs to everyone else. I'm going to create these things, and then I'm going to give them to everyone else. Oh, I'm going to stick with an axe. I'm going to uh, roll your hunter on that one. <clears throat> and see if you successfully created it or if there's like a mishap or anything like that. The rest of you are on, uh, on your way back to the... Uh... Oh, sorry. You, you get back to the hotel. You start putting that together. What, what are the rest of you doing? Jace has rediscovered smoking to relax. <laughs> and uh, I'm probably on my second pack of cigarettes already today. Speaking of which, the uh, little fire alarm sensor starts going off. Me, 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 me. Turn it off. <laughs> no, this is before you, you, like you were taking out your cigarette to go light it. And that's when the, the cigarette, the smoke sensor went off in What's the hotel room. What's burning in here? <laughs> Who's on fire? <laughs> well knowing this group it's a valid question to ask oh yeah you see like uh, eventually the door to the bathroom opens and just wisps of smoke come, come flying out it's drifting Turn out of there fire alarm and I go instead of a and Lucius, Lucius walks back out of there <laughs> hey you guys Can have you fun not burn the hotel down no no not yet no <laughs> It's just annoying, you know, it keeps going off for 15 minutes. Lucius, what have you done? I'm going to um, pull the battery out of it. Make sure it doesn't keep going off. Okay. Lucius, what what have you done? I'm just practicing. Just practicing. Pra <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> really, really. Disappearing people wasn't enough. Fucking... Really? Just real Back quick, is Sean carrying any of the Molotov cocktails or anything? Um, <laughs> yeah, he's taking got the whole thing on the table. He's like, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I got this Russian grenade. I'm gonna make some Molotovs right. and stuff. Like, <laughs> there's some thermite. Like, hey, yeah, you know he's, what? he's doing the whole thing. Hey, you know a funny story? If you put gunpowder in alcohol, it burns like twice as fast. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Yeah, the more also, you wish you didn't know. The more you wish you didn't know, yeah. <laughs> I totally didn't learn this by shooting off fireworks. <laughs> uh, assuming you... Uh, did, was there something else that you wanted to do, Jace, uh, besides just like taking up smoking no. now? No, okay, no, no. Take... Nothing, nothing in particular for Jace at all. Okay. Uh, so I have... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If I have a little bit of time at the end, I want to talk to Lucius. Mm. I'm going to say that Jesse has been working on a secret project, which is basically oh. the shell of something to spend a major charge on, but not necessarily knowing what to do with it yet. Just like building a shell. As a humanoid? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Jesse's hard at work. He's like tooling around, putting something together, uh, using the length of. Uh... Where are you keeping this thing? Too <clears throat> close. In the closet. <laughs> like dragging stuff from the Jeep and like working on it in the living room and then like stuffing it into the no, closet. No, no, it's hanging. Cleaning lady it's comes hanging. in, looks at it, and goes, oh shit. <laughs> it's hanging like a suit from the. From the... Dear God, that's not creepy at all. When when Rosa comes in to, to clean the room, she's like, "Oh fuck no!" She <laughs> walks in, sees that dude hanging from the ceiling, turns right the fuck around. <laughs> you clean your damn self. <laughs> hey, your damn the self on the bed. <laughs> happens all the time. Uh, okay, so you Just working on that? A vague uh, humanoid form. <laughs> Made out uh, of put the... random shit. <laughs> Old metal, rusted metal pieces and stuff yep. like that, yeah. You put together the, the rest of your plan, as it were, and you coordinate with Wizzy and Eve uh, to start working on stuff. Is it this evening, or are you going to wait till the, the next evening it's for Sean and evening. Damien to get rested? Okay. Tomorrow evening, so everyone gets plenty of rest. Damien Excellent. can build up charges, and Sean can get some sleep. I want to. Okay. I actually don't. I actually. Um, I do want to. I do want to get rest, but I. 
I want to I wanna ask everyone for like 10 minutes time. Well, yeah. Like, just to talk. Ooh. And I want to kind of like pull them all together and like I've got all this other, you know, bullshit on the table, fucking malt of cocktails and mixing gunpowder and other bullshit and like, yeah, this is fun. It's also very stupid doing it in a hotel room, but whatever. Here we are. Um, where else am I going to do it? Park bench would have been good. At least if I set something on fire out there, it ain't going to burn the whole thing down. Um, but here we are. And this is kind of like the mental process he's going to go into. And he's going to uh, bring everyone out. And, uh, he's, uh, I appreciate everything you, you guys have done since forever like it's all it's only been like maybe a month um but you ever ever i will say ever since i had to deal with the police on my own we've been great um and i i i appreciate all of it and i know all of you have gone to and a lot of extraordinary lengths, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'll, I know you guys all have your reasons, but um, I am thankful you're, you're all here. Mm -hmm. And um, he's going to give each of them, like, one Molotov, or like he's going to—he's going to give each of them a, a little kit to go with, and he's actually not going to make one for himself. He's going to give <laughs> all of the, all of the, like the Molotovs and the weapons that he's making to them, and be like, "This is this is for emergency purposes. Use what you have when you can." stay alive that's all I want for everyone here and he's going to push the provisions he's making to everyone um, I hate that it's come to this and I owe I have to own some measure of responsibility for all of this I didn't deliver Gus's real name I made a decision not to I have to own up to this at least in a little bit in a little way and uh you know, for better or worse, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and thank you for helping, for coming, for just being you. For being you, very well put. Hey man, that's what that's what friends and associates are for. Besides. Honestly, I've never known anyone to give me a, a, an emergency Molotov cocktail. I need to break when break when needed. So, <laughs> with your luck, you get, you it get, both get. will and won't break, and I don't understand how that's going to be possible. Wow, I wonder how that would work. No, no, I shouldn't think about that. Hey, man, you have some information that uh, Sean does not have concerning the fate. Of his son Jackson back at that mansion in the basement. Yeah, but now is not the time. Okay. That's is gonna, there ever a time? That's gonna screw him up. <clears throat> Just one. So, he's keeping it to himself for the moment. All right. But um, if everyone has said their piece, he wants to. Uh, talk to Lucius for a bit. 
and uh, we have to deal with this proxy somehow, or at least I have to. I can't be walking into this thing thinking that I'm going to turn on you. Do you have any bright ideas? Mm. Well, I've, I've been thinking. I have a theory. The proxy connects you and him. What if, what if we just stopped being us? Just start over. Just stop being myself. We get through this. When we get through this, just or can do it today. Leave everything in this room. Just leave it all behind. Walk into a new town, new names, we're new people. I mean, just get rid of everything. The only thing stopping me from doing that is Jackson. I can change my name. Why in hell? I want to be a better version of myself. I want to be someone else. You say that, and your eyes drift over to the mask that uh, Father Vega gave you. The Persona Mancer mask. When you put it on, you can take on whatever visage you want. You appear and sound like the person that you imagine. I'll grab the mask. Take on a visage of someone else. He'll put it on. And he'll think fuck it, let's 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 try this. We'll put it on and we'll think of Gus. Let's mm. see what happens. Wow. Yeah, you like you put on the mask and everything around you starts to change. I'm assuming everybody's unnatural is like at four or higher. Yeah. Okay. If it is not, go ahead and make him natural. <laughs> <laughs> because everything about him changes right before your eyes. Like his tone of voice and everything changes. But it's still him. You can very obviously tell it's it's Sean talking, but it, it just it, it, it's unmistakably Gus uh, from a sound and visual perspective. Well, this is the first step. Being someone else. <laughs> Are you actually trying to be like Gus while you wear the mask? From from Sean's perspective, yes, absolutely. Like if this is what it takes to distance himself, he would try and be more like Gus. You, you do that, and you, you inevitably come to this uh, crossroad of questions where it's like, why does Frank want his true name? Like, what is it that he wants to do with that uh, against Gus? You can't really kill Gus. Like, that's not no. a thing that can happen. So why does he want his name so badly? It's the one question you haven't really, that little question that's been annoying you since this whole thing started where he was like give me the name or i'm gonna kill your son uh you don't know what the answer to it is or what he wants with it i have a question sure um we knew someone and this is this is above the game real quick um we knew someone that had information about how to use a true name Mm. Who was that? About using a true name. 
Uh, was that Gus's said, assistant? Uh, Bill? The police no, officer from the prosecutor? The, uh, from the mansion. From, from the House of Horrors that Lucius went to and got turned. Oh, the House of Renunciation. House of Renunciation, yes. Oh, House of Change. No. House of... Yeah, no, he fell into... <laughs> He ran into the room of rusted things. That's where everything started disappearing around him. And like he disappeared and he doesn't know how much time he spent in this void. And when he came out of it, when uh, what's their face pulled him out of it, like he was a completely different person. He was an inverted version of himself. But didn't she, didn't what's her face say she had information or, or kind of hint at it? Oh, are you talking about Forsyth from the sleepers? No, the the no. lady that the, the lady house from of the house of Renunci yeah the house the house's agent. Oh, uh, Marcia, that's right. No, she didn't say anything regarding true names. I don't think there was a, a question posed uh, to her about true names or anything like that. Do we have a way of contacting her still? Uh, Gus would be the one, the main point of contact for that one. He's okay. one of his agents, so to speak. Of course, Gus. Uh, you know. And I'll, I'll I'll pose this question because this is what he's thinking about. Is he's like trying to take on a little bit of a persona, um, and he'll pose a question to Lucius, and then uh, everyone else is. We don't know what he actually wants with. Gus's true name. But, assuming they've done something to him, that may be our ticket to Gus's salvation as well. If we knew how to use it. What do you mean? Uh, I'm Frank. Uh, Sean. Wow. First of all, fuck you. <laughs> uh well, well, sorry, like we are here. we know that they're all they all have powers we all don't know that they all have abilities like you can't kill gus but you can use him what if gus is like a battery a power he can't he's not an active you know active destructive power but he he's a battery of energy. He can't be killed, right? So he's kind of loaded with energy, and right. his true name would give, you, give him access to it. It it would. Um, I'm I'm more concerned with trying to get him back using his true name, if need be. Sean brings up an interesting point, or sorry, Jace rather. Um, he has powers above most other people and if it's if it's possible that somebody like Gus has like magical energy of some sort inside of him uh, that you know that one thing you can do through the proxy and Gus told you this you can sling magic back and forth charges whatever so like if if you were if you were a adept instead of a an avatar Sean Frank could conceivably take your charges through the proxy. Stuff mm. like that. That's the sort of thing you can do. Yeah. But yeah, so he's going to... Well, he's going to double down on it, um, but he's also going to like pose a question of how... If Gus is mind-controlled or taken over in some other way, how mm. are we going to get him back? We can't kill him. We don't want to kill him. How do we fix that situation? And then also, Chase makes a very good point. He is an unlimited battery. If he, if Frank somehow gets his hands on him, there is no telling what he can do. Yeah, that doesn't bode well. But almost as soon as you pose the question, you almost get the answer to your own question when you pose it because it's like, what are we going to do if Gus gets taken over? Oh, shit. We can't do anything about that. 
because he's basically unkillable. He might be able to be physically uh, overpowered, which is what you imagine happened back at the mansion. He hasn't escaped there yet. Um, but you can't affect him with, you can't attack him with magic. Like you can't blast him and expect shit to happen. You might be able to track him with magic or you know do stuff like that if he's not prepared so he's, for it. But. So he's basically unassailable. Unassailable in the mundane sense, certainly. Magic can still affect him in certain ways, but you can't kill him or harm him with magic. Do you think we could use the mask like you're using it, as well as some of our ability to, to get in contact with Gus? I mean, almost from a, from a minor proxy with him temporarily? Mm -hmm. A way to do that? He's powerful enough. You know his true name. That gives you access to him. Uh when Frank Gordon has done a proxy with me, it he hasn't been able to physically communicate at all. He takes over my body and that's it. I don't know if that power's greater than that. So you just you just touched on something very interesting. You don't have a whole lot of ties to Gus, but you do have his true name, and now you can literally look exactly like him. It, Those are maybe, two very, very potent aspects to a proxy. So, conceivably, you could, in theory, create a proxy between yourself and Gus and potentially possess him and swap bodies, just like Frank did with you. That's a really good idea. It is a good idea. But it, it shouldn't be you, Sean. You've already been possessed by Frank. If, if, if for some reason he could find a way to tap you doing that, that could be really, really, really bad for everybody. You need someone outside the proxy for that. And... Who would that be, I wonder? Everyone looks have... to Jace. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, we yeah, would really I'm, need Gus I'm, right I'm, now, right? We need to make sure he's all right, or what's going to happen to him. But we really need Gus right now, right? I think we do. Yeah. Or at least let him give him. At least let him know we're coming for him, or where, or where he's at, or what we can do. Damien's going to help. Gonna look at his watch. What time is it? Ah, <laughs> uh, it's later in the evening. We're going to say. What time? Uh, is it six, seven, seven, eight, eight o'clock. We'll say close to. We, I, can potentially fix this. Oh. If one I of you... Need, I need... Hear me out. I need to hijack a bus full of people. <laughs> and do what with it? <laughs> Risk my life and everybody's life in it. Wow. <laughs> look, no. one thing I know I can do. No, no, absolutely. If not. I look, if I'm really charged up, as in like charged up, I can rewrite history. Make it so literally. Make it so after I, me, and uh, after I'm born. I Frank can make Gordon it so, falls down a goddamn hole and dies. No, my history. I can't affect other people's history, only mine. But I can make it so that we never went to that mansion. Therefore, Gus never went there. Therefore, Gus might still be with us. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but I can try to change it. If when you rewrite shit, do you still understand what's going on? Or do you I've just go back? I've never and done say, it before, so I don't know what happened. Also, my uh, also, and this is just literally sh me talking here. No, fuck no. You're literally talking about risking your lives and the lives of people in that bus in in the bus. Absolutely, fucking Sean. Sean that's the game. The, the the game uh, he, sure that's that's the game the game i was willing 
to bet your and my life on. That's personal responsibility. That's me making hey, a decision. Hey, if we can find 10 willing people, I can still do it. Holy shit. Sean, <laughs> you need to look at the bigger picture. I am looking at the bigger picture. The world's the going proxy? to end soon. Have you They're thought dead the, regardless. Have you literally thought of the proxy? We're doing what Frank Gordon is doing. We are gambling with the lives of more than ourselves. He's literally like, he's literally just throwing the dice to the wind and going, the more, pe the more pe people that get possessed, oh, well, who cares? Flip a coin, you live or you die. Like, we're, we would be drawing closer to Frank, not farther away. Sean, we've been through a lot of shit. But personally, I don't need your approval for this. I'm suggesting, but I don't need your approval for anything. If I see that no, this you're... is the, one of the only ways out, I will take it. That, that, that's, no, that's a fair point, a Damien. Boy. Damien, and you know, I, I backed every single play you want to do, Damien, because I know the effects you can have. But let, let, can, let, can, let, can we do some let's say, first? Let's use that as a last resort. Thank you. That I prefer. Look, I'm I, I'm I'm outside the proxy. I'm outside of all that. Give me the mask. I'll impersonate Gus. I'll make the contact with him. Keeps you guys safe. And I've been with Gus for quite a while. I can I can pretty much know how he acts. I'm, I'm happy to do that. The it's way probably I safer see it, me to do it. Yeah, but the way I see it is they outnumber us, they outgun us, they out adept us, they probably out archetype slash avatar us. Indeed. I, while they're talking about making a proxy for Gus, I just I'll I'll finish my little project over here and put like the last bits of a kind of silly looking Gus face on it with like a cigar <laughs> <laughs> right like it's kind of ridiculous looking at this point and just be like uh, well you know how to imitate Gus right I'll point at Jace does anyone know how the proxy actually works Lucius has a better idea than all of us <laughs> That looks at it all. Because we could create another Gus. Yeah, that's uh, that's certainly a big component. Uh, you know what, what Gus has taught you about proxies, um, the closer your actual your true names are to one another, or if they're anagrams, uh, their, your relation, your like blood relation to the the other person. Uh, if their presence, or if you have significant charges that you can spend, if you're an adept, uh, that will contribute towards the the percentage chance you have to effectively create the proxy. Like every every uh, aspect of it increases the probability of you successfully being able to use the proxy. So if you put enough stuff together, you can have like an eighty percent chance, which is what Frank had at the beginning of the game. It's no longer that anymore, but yeah. Um, that's kind of like what you're looking at. So we named the robot Gustavo uh, Galsan is its true name. Uh, we give it all the attributes of Gus. It's a real person if you, if you pull it off. Yeah. yeah. Um, give it all the attributes of Gus. Um, make it a whole lot like Gus. And then tell <laughs> Gus that he can use it. Huh. He can have I a have proxy no with himself. <laughs> Get himself out of the... Let this new consciousness be the one trapped in, and then he can help us free himself. And he can have someone to take over. It's a perfect plan! Okay. Let's do it! 
You can do that if you like. That the night before you plan this uh, assault on the mansion. This is um, batshit crazy. And I am hundred percent in. I, I am. I am also in for no other reason than I kind of want the mask to fuck with my own proxy. Right, but so now now we'll have three gusses. <laughs> they won't know Lucius. Frank Gordon won't know which one is the real Gus anymore. Lucius starts flipping through his pad of like notes, scribbles something down and just nods like, yep, yeah, checks out. Yeah. It's a great yeah, plan. The math is all there. Yeah. <laughs> and this is all crazy... very interesting. And uh, and, and, and on top of that, we have a we have a crazy batshit insane plan to reverse time in case that fails. So yeah. this sounds like a perfect <laughs> setup, guys. I could we couldn't have got any better than this. I would like to add something to our plan. Uh, yes. I don't option. know if you'll all like it, but I did speak with Sean about it earlier. If I were to leave town, just leave, become a new person, I could choose to be Gus, I guess, maybe. Flipping through the notepad, like, like make myself <laughs> named Gus. Make, yeah, just be Gus, and then I'll, I'll join you. And, and then there's four Gus. Gusses. And there's four Gusses. <laughs> That's all. That these. This is all of a perfectly viable plan. However, I do have to ask, Damien, did you really want to go and uh, hijack a bus? <laughs> well, the way... <laughs> do it. The way I would actually... John speaking right now. Do it. <laughs> the way you would actually do it is probably steal a minibus, pick up about 10 homeless people, like promising like money, food, They're gonna gamble whatever, their lives <laughs> and get on a minibus, get on the highway in the opposite direction and just like hit hard on the gas and, you know, close your eyes and just, you know, go where the road takes you. <laughs> you could do that during the daytime the next day while they're doing their thing, if that's what you want them to try to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that 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 would potentially give me a major charge, would would which would give me the ability to literally rewrite my own history for whatever I want. <clears throat> Interesting, but you would have to be in the bus yes. with them, and yes. you'd have to basically be driving at like seventy miles an hour or whatever. Yes. Let go of the wheel. <laughs> kind of. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. What can That's go wrong? Perfect. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and with that being said, it's time for break. We'll find out uh, what, what chaos ensues after when we get back at uh, 540 Eastern Standard Time. Smoke them if you got them. I need a cigarette.
and we're back. Our team was uh, planning on uh, creating a proxy of uh, Gus, the first and last man, or the Comte de Saint Germain, as he's known by some, uh, and or creating some other uh, contingencies for this plan, which may, may involve the hijacking of a bus full of homeless people. We'll see. So uh, that evening, you all have perfect sleep no anxiety no one's up late like thinking about dying tomorrow or anything like that everything's just you know so cool uh you're like this <laughs> waking up the next day i'm um, self-medicating it's fine <laughs> yeah it's probably wise to do so yeah you're already getting into the habit like oh yeah well, this, i'm not gonna go to sleep no any other way so. uh yeah you drink like a half a bottle of wild turkey or something like that and pass out and wake up the next thing in the morning and uh, you drag yourself out of bed and uh, you start going through the process of uh, getting ready for that evening's assault. Uh, Damien, uh, did you want to do something? Uh, as, did you want to uh, put your contingency plan into effect? That could go, that totally won't go horribly wrong in any way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So the idea here is to like charter a bus or to steal one and then like co coax uh, homeless people in with the idea that like, oh yeah, you know, I've got money and you've got, I've got like free I'm food here to help. and whatever, <laughs> like, you yeah. know, what my like, free shuttle might service. be, uh, it free might be service. easier than getting homeless people on the bus is, you know, many senior citizen centers have their own mini bus and um, that is easy to hijack and steal. Not that I would know anything about that, just, you know. <laughs> a little All more right. pliable, pliable like than that. bus full of seniors. <laughs> oh, Grandpa, what's great. you today? <laughs> well, let me tell you what. <laughs> Are you the normal one driver? Less, it's one, it's yes. one less step in the process, and it may be easier for you to get one. So there, there's that. Am I, what is wrong with me? <laughs> great. All right. So you, uh, you put this start working on putting this plan together this yep. is a real last minute thing like you want to get a bus old people whatever and then like do you want to take it out on the highway or like on oh, the side streets of the highway city? like highway i need, need to charge up on the highway oh, okay all right <laughs> all right oh, you're enough of a good con man that i'm not even gonna make you roll to just be like oh yeah i'm the driver today the other guy called out sick he <laughs> just yeah, and you take the the position of the of the you take the keys from the the valet or whatever. You, you get the bus as as the old people are coming around and like, hey, what happened to Johnny? Johnny's <laughs> sick. <laughs> oh, that poor boy. Oh you start yeah. Driving out. <laughs> yeah, you pick him up from like this like nice little senior place where they they take uh, Gam Gam and Peepar are typically. Uh, taken out to for the remainder of their time uh, so you, some of these people are like not in the best of shape but they're still able to walk around this is like their one opportunity per month or whatever to get out and some get some outside air and go somewhere different uh this is the bingo bus that you're taking uh a hostage <laughs> taking captive of. Bingo you're taking bus. it on the highway hey you missed the exit down that way so there's mm. like pointing out like you're missing, you're going the wrong way. No, I'm not. <laughs> you're just like, uh, where I'm going. And what? We don't need roads. I'm on the highway. That's mm -hmm. where I floor it. Like, like really, like we're oh, going. Oh yeah, they they're real big fans of that. Like, well, I want your, I want your license. I want, I, I want your first and last name and your uh, driver, your driver ID. You see the one lady says, and she's like trying to jot down nose and they're trying to look at the you know where you're supposed to have like the license or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. Just jot down. Down shit. but she's on a, a rapidly moving bus so it's like <laughs> <laughs> uh meanwhile you see one of the guy one of the older guys stands up and says, hey what are you doing you're going the wrong way and you're driving like a maniac <clears throat> you just ignore yep. it keep driving yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and once there's like reasonably like starting to get enough traffic, I mean, people must be like reacting to a bus coming the yes, other way. Yes, yes. I eventually just like once I reach about 70, 75, 80 miles, 
I just... <laughs> you see, one of the guys gets up and he goes to approach the front of the bus, like, hey, I need you to pull over. And then as soon as he does, you let go of the wheel like this. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He tries to grab the, the wheel. That's <laughs> fine. Let him? Yeah, that's fine, because I'm not controlling anything anymore. Oh, and he, he's standing. Oh, no, I'm not going to hit the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. No. <laughs> Roll percentile. Lauren. Lauren. What percentile? Just a percentile? Yeah, just a percentile. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay. Yeah, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Indeed. You want to roll high or you want to roll low? What's your oh, preference? no, that's a catch. That's a, that's mm -hmm. a trick question. Uh, let's go with high. All right. Roll. <laughs> Wow, Dude. you rolled the opposite of what of what you said you would want yeah. to roll. <laughs> All right, so you take this thing out on the road. Grandpa grabs the wheel and he's trying to he's trying to steady the bus, but he actually like veers it in the wrong direction. And he goes, even though the one one car manages to slow down and get out of the way, another the, a guy on the bike though isn't so lucky, and he goes, "There's like a." <laughs> All the way through the back of the bus and just everybody like gas oh oh my god oh my god they're like they're screaming some guy just got like dragged under the bus it's for the greater <laughs> oh good it's for the greater good oh. for the greater good so you get uh your charge <laughs> or charges from that oh my god please tell please tell me that you say you physically say that <laughs> <laughs> to them <laughs> right before you get it. You're a fucking loony. You're a fucking lunatic. You know that? And he's like, he tries to pull the bus over. You let it go at that point? You just walk yeah, but, my, yeah but my foot is still on the accelerator. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he can't control that. He can't. He tries to push you. Like, he tries to pull you off of the, the driver's seat. Roll struggle. Unless you want to blast them. <laughs> you want to blast Grandpa with Matt, with Chaos Magic. You're free. I got a two on 25. <laughs> well, I didn't roll a one, so. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa was in the Navy. He's trying to, like, push you off of the driver's seat, and you just elbow him in the face, and he just goes reeling back, like, ah! Dr the, the, <laughs> the bus is just careening. It hits the median eventually. And it just starts like skidding, like like it hits the railing, and it goes, you, there's like the screeching sound as the bus is slowing down. But it's gonna take a while to get there, and it's just like. <sighs> and you, and you okay, I hit the brakes the, uh, like really hard. I hit, I literally like I brace <laughs> and I hit the brakes. The other, the other guy that was coming up to help, uh, the other one that was trying to pull you off, trips over him as the as the brakes hit, and his face goes right into the center console. Boom! And he's just like, oh. <laughs> People are just throwing his shit, and somebody's like, does this mean we're gonna, I'm not gonna be able to watch Tucker tonight? And you just yeah, throw the, the door open to get the fuck off the bus. <laughs> and uh, like with all the commotion and everything that's happening, I, I I I make a smooth. I try to make a smooth getaway, like out of like I use people around that's probably getting out of their cars, stuff, and I try yeah. to mingle with people and just disappear. <laughs> so there's cars like like stopping as you're like running out into the freeway, like trying to get away. Uh, there's like two patrol cars like heading down that way immediately. Like, uh, are you gonna try to take somebody's car, or are you gonna try to like con them out of it, or like what do you want to try to do? What do you mean? Oh no. <laughs> um. Yeah, if I can hijack a car real quick and make a getaway, I'll do it. I won't right. go very far though. I'm going to like the nearest the, exit. The nearest exit. Find the nearest. Uh, I only have the Japanese word. Oh, parking lot. And. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and as I go, I do my best to wipe my own prints off everything. Sure. All right. <laughs> so I mean, you, I'm, uh, I'm doing this with gloves anyways. Yeah, I'm imagining so. You, br you br bust out your piece and you like 
pointed at the person. You're going full GTA at this point. Like you yank the person out of the car, get in the get in, and there's two squad cars like coming right up on your ass, and you just veer off into the uh, exit lane. Give me pursuit. Last roll. Oh, no. This one. This one you want to make. <laughs> Otherwise, they're going to try to box you in. Oh, wow. How is that going to work? Pursuit. I have, have another skill. I have. Wait a minute. Let's Unless give this a try. To get yeah, that's what's going to happen. Uh, so let me see here if I can do that. Okay. So substitute magic for irrelevant identity or ability. Uh, I'm going to spend a minor charge, and how I'm going to justify uh, getting away with it with pursuit is blind luck. Oh shit! Okay. I, I'm 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 I, I like I'm at the right time, right place, right moment, and everything just works out. Okay. So I would you roll my anthropo. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm going to use my anthropomancer identity as a substitute for. Uh, what you call it? Pursuit. Okay. By just saying, you know, right place, right time. Okay. Pretty good. It's for the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go, and I'm rolling anthropomancy. Uh, what oh, no. happened? Click oh, I need roll. to roll. I click on the roll. <laughs> you did roll anthropomancer, yes. All right, I'm gonna. Re oh, it, it's a uh, obsession. Does it work? Yeah. You can flip Fifty-six. It. Excellent. So yeah, you're just like weaving in and out of the the cars that are making their way towards the exit. You get in front of one particular uh, truck that is hauling like these long tubes for construction, and the the squad cars are like using their sirens to get him to pull over. As it t tries to do so, one of the latchings comes loose and the fucking tubes come tumbling down between you oh. and the cop cars. It's like, oh shit, they swerve out of the way. <laughs> they try to swerve out of the way. One of them goes right into the fucking tubes, like, oh. crashes, uh, comes to a screeching halt. The other one swerves around, but is has to like eat the median, basically. And that gives you time to skitter away down the street. Um, and I park the car and slowly walk away. <laughs> oh, very good. All right. And meet up with everybody else. Interesting. Uh, I wonder how Jamie's doing in front of the news. <laughs> <laughs> Highway speed and seniors are, are hurt. Not one guy on a motorcycle got mauled by a, by a large bus. Um, OK, Man, massive pileup just outside the city. You don't know what happened there. Um, what are the rest of you doing, uh, specifically Jess? Uh, finishing, putting the finishing touches on my, on my Gus bot. Hmm, okay. Um, I'm gonna spend all of my charges. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. Wait, you want to give this thing life. For that, you have to lose your memories, right? To... Well, I already, I already did. I have a major oh, charge from like three games ago. Oh, or like, oh, you haven't spent it yet? No, I have not used the major charge. Oh my from, god. From giving okay. up like my own personal storyline. Right? So I want to give it that. I have two uh, just minor charges uh, from various things and then one uh, significant as well. Um, just a. Yeah, just to be clear, the, what you forgot was Fernwood specifically, though. It wasn't like your entire connection to the, the rest of the team. No, no, yeah, the... yeah. Just like all the okay. memories that were in that whole whatever the weird town was. Because okay. I don't remember it. I was going to say, like, otherwise I'd be making you have, do Inuai yeah. uh, <laughs> checks or something at this point. Okay, um, that's fine. Go ahead and uh, do, do your thing. You, you, spend the, you spend the charge, so yeah, it, 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 you can literally bring this thing to life and it, it thinks that it is Gus. Um and uh, I'm gonna name it the same as Gus. I'm gonna make it like basically as much Gus as I can. Uh okay. everything about it will be Gus like. 
Um, it's kind of a rush job, so it doesn't look quite like him, but yeah. uh, it's it's pretty good, especially if you put the mask on it, like, forget it, you know? Um, and then uh, I'll tell it that uh, that it needs to use a proxy ritual on himself in order to help save himself. And this thing comes to life and it's like, why did you do that? Like, oh no. You're making you, a huge mistake, it says. <laughs> With a heavy sigh. Because it want, believes it's Gus, so yeah. it's like, oh no. Well, you need to do a proxy with yourself. You're trapped right now. The other you is trapped. Shit. He <laughs> says, trapped where? We're not really sure, but we think it's the familiar house. Mansion? Oh, God damn it. Well, I guess there's no way to find out, but dive in and swim, he says. You could do the proxy ritual. Yeah, I can do the proxy ritual, he says begrudgingly. Um, he tells you what other ingredients and things that you need to perform the ritual. Do you wait for Damien and company to come back to host the ritual, or what do you want to do? Um, I mean, if they're out doing things, I'd probably try to get the plan moving forward. All right. Oh, oh Jace is there to help. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Jace and Excellent. Lucius were around, so... Yeah. We collect all so they, the they can assist. all the various things that we need, and just be like, "So, you're gonna go where he is, and he can come here, or at least you can speak to him and figure out what we need to do." We're gonna possess each other's bodies for the meantime, so the real me, whatever you want to call that, is gonna be here with you, and I'll be in his body. We'll do a switcheroo. All right. So a couple hours of, you know, preparing a ritual and everything like that. Uh, Gus initiates the, the ritual proceedings and he kind of like goes to one of the motel beds and he lies down. And then, and then suddenly you see him uh, sit up and like slowly, like first his eyes flicker open. He looks around look confused and he sits back up. He looks around and he looks at his hands and he's like, Son of a bitch, Jesse, you did it. Uh, and he looks around at the, the lot of you, and he's like, okay, what the fuck happened? What did I miss? It's been a rough couple of days, sir. But uh, um, we have something going. Uh, we're going to be dealing with the, the house tonight. We've got a multi-stage attack, and that's going to happen. We actually wanted to try to find a way to get you out first. Or by the way, at least where where you worst we could get you out. It might be too late already. He says. He's like they buried my ass in the backyard. I was using a technique that I know to hold to hold the air in for as long as I could. Imagine the other me that you put it, you swap places with is freaking out right about now. Well, it's a <clears> robot, <throat> so it can't breathe. Well, yeah, but in... my body does, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he has the body, still. Oh, the, the buried one still has the body, yeah. Yeah, they're basically swapping places. So real Gus and Mechanomancy Gus are swap, swapping. And he's just like, okay. If He's like, if shit, he gets out of the bed. He reaches, he looks over and sees Lucius, like, looking at, like, the notes for an Islamancy. He grabs it, rips a paper, a random paper out. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> he grabs a writing implement from somewhere and starts, like, sketching out a layout of the of the mansion he's like yeah they got guys here 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 and he's like uh this kid that they're keeping inside the mansion is located here in the back uh, and he's like uh as for the he's like as for uh where the others are where the split and your son he looks over at uh uh sean he's like i don't know Uh, you could you can roll a uh, connect or notice roll, Sean. That was higher. You need to bid a seventeen, a 
and roll under that skill. Hold on one second, my computer's being dumb, sorry. Okay, no worries. Roll those meat dice, alternately. And he says that, and then Gus looks at the, the rest of you, and he's like, I feel you're wasting time. He's like, every day that goes by, there's another day that, that we postpone. He's like, the, he's like the, the plan is almost coming to fruition. I know where Frank Gordon is and where his Thanatomancer is. As well. Oh, shit. We're all together. And he's like, give me a map of the city now. Map of the city. Oh, quickly, quickly, quickly. He's like snapping his fingers. <laughs> okay, John. John. John wouldn't want to make this rule. Sean, on the other hand, definitely would. So yes, I'm using my obsession. <laughs> I got a six. Oh, no. oh my God. Okay. Well, you made it, but you made it underneath his roll. Oh, so that's you not good to, then. You have to roll. You have to roll higher than what he rolled, but under your skill. Okay. Well, so he this, tries anyway. This, he's a much better liar than you are able to notice. <laughs> but fair. He's like, I don't know what happened to your son. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so he goes on to say, uh, "Give me a." Give me the map, and like you bring him like some tourist map that you snagged oh. from like a, a one of the gas stations or whatever. He opens it up, and he points to one of like these uh, uh, largely not abandoned. It's just you know because of the industry that it's in. Like the, this one particular airport is like dead in the water, like it's not busy at all. And he's like, they've taken. He's like, they've got people in this airport. He's like, that's where they're performing the ritual. It's going to happen at night. And he's like, if we don't stop them before tomorrow evening, it's the end of the world as we know it. And you're going back to your body, Eskis. I'm buried six feet in the fucking ground. I have no choice. Well, as far as a proxy goes, you're going to have to go back, correct? Yeah. Where are you buried? couple meters out from behind the house where they bury all their other victims it's a freshly dug grave you'll it's not hard to spot i would appreciate it if you got me out as soon as you can but under current circumstances i understand however there's a good possibility some of you are not going to survive this if one of if, if one of you have chosen to take my place you need to get with me before the end of the world. And before he go, he's able to elaborate on that, you see he just kind of collapses to the floor and you see the uh, he just, he, he wakes back up and he just, the, Gus gets back up and he's like <laughs> he may, he's like making this weird sound. He doesn't have lungs really, so it's like this weird sound where he's like learning to breathe for the first time, the automaton. And he's like, I had to breathe while I was in that body. Now I have to breathe while I'm inside this. Oh, wait, no, I don't have to breathe. And this is like, he's making like this weird wheezing noise. And he's like, oh, that was weird as fuck. Okay. <sighs> okay, now what? <laughs> he so we fill in the <laughs> Gus bot with the Gus plan. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Do you think we can get now, the Gus bot uh, to go dig Gus out, or should or one of us is going to need to go do it? He has a digging bot, as it is. Yeah, I was going to say, I have, <laughs> like, a, a specifically digging How slash long? cutting robot now. How long It'll is that going to take? Not long. I mean, between the bot and, like, another Gus, <laughs> it won't take very long to dig a, a you know, six-foot hole in the ground or whatever and pull him out. So the or, question then become, comes is, can we get to him before all the shit goes south, or can we not he said tomorrow night uh these the, frank is going to try to enact the the ritual because he and it, what, what he had a, a sense of urgency in his mouth in his voice when he was talking to you he's like you basically got the gist that because of everything that's been going on he realizes that he's tipped off more people than he was anticipating and now he's trying to uh move up the timetable of his plan okay i'm gonna oh. actually grab a pen and right on the wall, Eve, plan change, call me at one of the burner phones. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's better than me trying to call her. 
And then she calls um, you within the first couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, she's like, "What's going on? What's why are we changing uh, plans?" Uh, we we spoke to Gus. We know exactly where they're going to where they're enacting the ritual. It's not in the house. It's at this location in the city. And I reiterate with the location on the map. Oh shit! Okay, I'll get okay. We can work something out. Wizzy and I can make a plan. When are we gonna hit this place? Uh, he said Gus said it was tomorrow night. Did I get that correct? Well, it, sorry. <clears throat> this is the day after you made the plan, so it would be tonight, like later on in the evening. It's it's tonight, so we'll need to move, or move just move the location of your, of your attack to there. You know, forget the competition; they're going to be right there. We should all hit it at once. Wait, the ritual's going on tonight. That's not. Why would he do that? Wizzy That's even not... hasn't hasn't even finished warding the city yet. I don't think he cares anymore. Oh shit! Okay, well, um. Do what you gotta do. We'll meet you there. Uh, what time should we expect you? Um, let's just plan for seven thirty, I guess. Seven thirty. All right. Fuck. And she hangs up the phone. I, I will do. It's about to get real now. <laughs> well, I'll do much the same with my sleeper contact. You okay? You tell Foresight like, hey, it's he's moving his timetable up. It's happening tonight, later in the evening. Uh, okay. At this location, you give him like the airport uh, name. Mm -hmm. She messages you back. He's like, "Okay, I'll be sending my people along shortly." Thank you for the info. What do you do then? Before it starts to get dark, what do you all do? Damien comes one, back by this point. One of us has like, "Hey, what I miss, guys?" <laughs> one of us has to go get Gus before this all goes down. I, I as much as I much as I trust Jesse's creations, I, I'll go. No, no, you're more valuable than the entire team. Let me go. I can get in another. I'm. The, I'm. It's time for me to put my avatar to good use. Do you want to add you're anything walking. to this, uh, Damien? To this plan? Now that you have, now that you're holding, you're holding onto a lot of mojo, man. Like you're, you're I, I, just that, like, that's what I'm telling them. Look, I'm charged up, ready to go for this one thing. Okay, well, here's the here's the thing. Frank's changed his plan. They're moving on the ritual tonight at this location in the city we just found out. Thanks to the proxy with Gus. Gus is buried a few meters behind the house in a location. Got to, and we've got to dig him up so he can survive, hopefully. If the end of the world happens, he needs to be conscious. Damien, you said you could get him out by changing time, yeah? Well, not changing time per se. I'm just rewriting history in a way. Do I do that no, now, I or <laughs> what do we do? If you do that, if you can do that now and keep Gus and uh, you and I from going in there, are we going to retain the same information that we had about? I have no idea. All I right. think I will keep memories of. For me personally, I think I will remember everything, but for the rest of you, everything that's oh. happened after the mansion is going to be rewritten according to well, us not going there except me jesse and lucius because we didn't that us going and doing what we did has nothing to do with you guys going to the mansion yes it has everything to do with it we probably would have gone with you to the compound yes. if they hadn't called well, we if were Gus hadn't looking. gone missing well, we were out looking for Lucius. We got Lucius. I sure volume right. of variables. I think... I think you should save it for in case this plan looks like it's going wrong. You need to go back and tell us it won't work. That's not how it works. Uh, he has to change his own timeline. It's not time travel like, like the movies. It's, it, it's not time travel yeah. either. <laughs> It's not time travel. So, but let's let's think. You guys never go to the mansion. The first reason we split after that up, we don't know what's going to happen. We can't the, know what's going to happen. Right. So. The first the first reason we split up was we were going to find me and Jesse were going to find Lucius, <laughs> and then I made a pit stop to go find my son. Theoretically, that will all be the same. You, oh my, uh, Damien and Jesse that entire thing changes and then we have no idea even if we meet up after that actually we might end up going with you yeah it's it's, it's that that's the thing what i'm going to be doing is like 
creating another timeline because I'm going to be make, doing an, I'm going to be taking, an, we're, we're, we're going to choose to go with you. Oh, to get Lucius. compound? Or to get, oh, to, um, okay, so you're changing it so that everybody goes to New Jersey instead of Wyoming? Is that the idea? I don't know. You know what? Do it. I think just just fucking do it. Do it. <laughs> just we're all sitting around thinking of what's going to happen. We don't know. We're not going to know. As as Sean says that, Damien just closes his eyes. Okay. Spends that 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 energy and just we never went to the bench. Never went to the mansion. Wow. We never went to the familia. We just went and got Lucius together because we're all friends. If you did that, then he never completed. He never made. He never. He ne Jesse never spent the major charge to make Gus. So none of that information was ga was gathered. <laughs> so you basically would have undone the last four sessions. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing, right? We're 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 retconning a lot of things now because of that. Oh. <clears throat> what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? But on the other hand, wait a minute. What? But but what happens to me? I'm the anthropomancer. Do I keep memories of everything? What 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 if what if you just made sure you told Gus not to go to the mansion and the, and we two went in anyway? We well, were out of there. But how are we going to walk out of there? Because we walk out of there because of Gus. We didn't walk out of there because of Gus. We got out of there because I was able to get the, get the thing open and get us downstairs. And we got out of there. Gus slowed them down. Yeah, we might be more injured. <laughs> we might be dead. You could alter the That's flow of events. Remember, a major, like, major stuff. So, like, if you wanted to, say, have someone <sighs> not die. Oh, what if, because I was there, right? Gus made it out with us. Mm. So you change it so that Gus didn't get trapped at the mansion. He made it out with us. He wow. was with us. Okay. There you go. That's interesting. So if Jesse, you can have your major charge back then. <laughs> you don't longer have a Gus bot. It's like someone took out the film reel, cut it, and then put it back in. And now it's like a completely different, there's a jump cut in the movie. And it's like, what are we doing here again? And Gus is like, um. Yeah, I don't know. I got a weird feeling of deja vu for some reason. I was looking at this map. He says, "It says looking at the uh, map of Seattle." <laughs> Does okay. So this is the important part. Does what Damien? Happened, what happens to my memories? I should I'm gonna know say that you I changed remember. It. I'm going to say you remember the alternate timeline. Make an unnatural check. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if this is completely useless. <laughs> that is absolutely fair. Unnatural. Hell yeah. Where is unnatural? Where's my unnatural? Oh, there you are. I roll notice for unnatural, right? Uh, it's yeah. A, a knowledge. yeah. Oh, 71. <laughs> this is your obsession. You're just like, Oh, I, I did it. I, I made it. I'm the only one who remembers what happened before, and I changed it. And, and you're like, does that mean I'm not actually me? Wait, who the fuck am I right now? <laughs> How do you oh, choose to respond you're, you're uh, flip now that, that you failed? <laughs> flip it. Can't flip those. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you just frozen in place like uh, no, I'm thinking you're in the headlights or what I should do? Cause one of my uh I one of my things is help people in need and we're all in need of Gus. Well, hmm. Gus is in need, right? He was buried. Could I use that to flip the 71? No, I would say that it would it would allow you to flip the entropomancy roll uh, to make the thing go off. Uh, oh yeah, you can do that with your obsession, regardless. You know what I mean? But okay, so I'm gonna roll an entropomancy first because mm -hmm. that wasn't entropomancy. What I rolled now was notice for the uh, unnatural oh. check. Okay. Okay, fifty-three. It works. 
But without a hitch, yeah. Yeah, Andrew Pumet, so now things get retconned. And yeah. I got a, uh, on the notice check for the unnatural, I got a 71. Excellent. You see, he's like, all right, so we know exactly where they're going to be, he says. <laughs> and you all have this weird, like, deja vu feeling, like, what the fuck? Weren't we doing something else just now? And you're like, you kind of shake I don't say anything. Second. I keep that info to myself. <laughs> I'm not telling anybody what happened. Yeah, even Gus is like, Okay, that was weird. Um, TV anyway, on the background what, what goes to report about the attack on the highway to something else. Like, <laughs> and puppies. Yeah, puppies. He look. He points to like the map. He's like, all right, this is where it's going to take place. This is what we found out. Now, look, I guess it's a question. It's not that important, but it's kind of relevant. What are we going to do with the goon that we got in the trunk? He says, he looks around the room. <laughs> You're like, what? And then you, you, you start remembering now, Damien. The reason why Gus knows where to go is because on the way out, you took one of the Occultus Familia goons with you, hmm. and he tortured the shit out of him, stuck him in your trunk. Oh, good. Now what are you going to do with him? Wouldn't he be... Well, he's not really bait, I guess. Tying loose ends? <laughs> yeah. Try and take his memory somehow? I get just drop him in feeling the... he needs to be buried. Huh. <laughs> oh, we'll bury him, all right, he says. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> I meant now, actually. Yeah, he kind of blinks. He's like, I mean, sure. I don't, I don't know why. Have, I just I thought don't of any that. qualms. He's like, you want to do it yourself? He says he puts the gun on the table. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean shoot him. We got a digger bot. We just dig a hole and put him in it. Problem solved. I like this idea. He's like, uh, you on board with this uh, this plan, Jesse? Can you, uh... I, I like tell the digger bot to start digging a hole in the backyard of wherever we are. <laughs> You're at a motel, so you they would have to go off the field, the, the field like, across the, the are, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like down <laughs> into the the a hole for this <laughs> goon. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of you can march him in, just toss him, and then the digger bot will dig it back up. So swat the guy across the face with a uh, Gus will take care of that part. He'll just like swat the guy across the face with a with a pistol, tie him up, tape his mouth shut, dump the body. So do we important question. We have all the information about what he was trying to do. Does that include the accelerated timeline now? Uh, it does not include some of the information because remember the reason that you made with uh, the, the deal with uh, Wizzy and Eve was to go back to the mansion to get uh, his son back, David, remember? Mm -hmm. but because Gus was never trapped there, you don't have no reason to go back to the mansion unless you want to. But, you know, you probably, I would imagine you met with Eve regardless and were like, hey, we're here to help you, Wizzy. He's like, yeah, well, my son is like, over there or whatever yep. like, and that, that still makes the plan work we still would be going right. for, for his son so, but now we can't it's up that point of like in time where gus made it out mm -hmm. can no longer be altered it's set in stone once i change something i can't unchange that thing that i changed ah you you've jfk'd it I can change well, other parts. <laughs> I can change other parts, but that specific point can no longer be changed for me. Yeah. So we're still going tonight, then. Yeah, yeah. we still we're still going tonight for to try to end this thing because we know that he, according to what we learned from the occultist goon, uh, there he Frank's moved up his timetable. You hear in your split, he says, looking to to Sean, uh, are working out of that airport. They're gonna cast the ritual tonight with the Thanatomancer. This is the big one, okay? There's no going back after this. And he's like, now one of you is going to have to take over. Because uh, after this, my deal with the clergy is at an end. And he's like, uh, which one of you is it? He looks around the room. Lucius raises a hand. <laughs> you sure? Sure as I'll ever be. Does anyone object? Well, I don't once. Think anyone objects? I think we all want to help. So, but one if it's twice. just one person, you want it, it's all yours. 
I could, like, uh, I'm, I might like at some point point at the half built robot in the closet because I assume I did that anyway. Mm. Could uh, be he's, that. Um... <laughs> you were building that Gus robot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and was doing like, that anyway. No offense. He's like, no offense, uh, uh, Jesse, but that thing couldn't hold up against uh, most of the shit I've I've been through in even one lifetime. And he's like, make, make a good distraction, perhaps, he says. And he's like, now as for you, he says, and he looks at Lucius. And he's like, this is all of my memories. All oh. of my pain and all of my joys will be yours. You can't die, no matter what. Rituals can sometimes affect you. That's why Frank wanted my true name. You can fuck with me that way. Thank you for doing this. Also, I'm sorry for what you're about to experience. And he locks eyes with you. And you remember that moment back in New Jersey when he peered into the eyes of that epitomancer who went half mad? Now it starts happening to you. Lucius, for a moment, was going to go, wait, wait, memories you didn't say anything about? <laughs> Uh, you're going to have to make five checks here. Uh, one for every stress. So one violence, one unnatural, one helplessness, and one isolation, and one self. Because it's a lot. He's basically pouring all of his skill, all of his uh, knowledge into you. And he's also passing the ability to live forever and be unharmed. Unharmed by anything. I mean, especially mundane means. Which means, after this, Gus will be mortal. You, for for the violence, you remember the smoke drifting up through the air as the bombs continued to drop around you, pelting the ground like explosive raindrops, littered like fish in a waterless sea, pieces of their bodies lie strewn throughout the macabre landscape. You knew all of them. For the unnatural, the sounds in the darkened hall continued to increase in volume and urgency as you made your way around the bend and came to find the source. Flashlight in one hand, pistol in the other, you gazed upon a horrific monstrosity that was born by traumatic and violent abuse that took place in this now abandoned and lightless building. The mound of flesh moved and surged as the distorted sounds from past events replayed itself in the form of this pulsing dripping, twitching thing that groaned and sobbed in the dark. Seeing the faces push up against the thin veil of flesh that composed the creature, screaming and begging for mercy, you raised the pistol and provided the mercy it sought. For helplessness. She was your first great love. A French painter whose name you sadly can't recall. Her work failed to be noticed in a time of cultural and artistic renaissance. As a result, she took her own life. Lamenting her loss for over a year, you decided to try to put an end to this cruel game of immortality. But no matter how hard you tried, no matter how esoteric the means, you just couldn't die. It was the cruel punchline to the cosmos' terrible jest you are the first and last man. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the repairer of reputations and the tailor of reality, now and forever. Amen. For isolation, 30 days in solitude. That's what you endured for the course of two years at Fair Steeds Sanitarium at Glasgow in the year of our Lord, 1823. You remember the feeling of being locked inside of a padded room for days on end. There was no interaction with anyone, only the occasional sounds of birds singing outside and wails from the others at night. You remember the boredom and the creeping madness staying on the periphery of your mind as the days crawled. The time spent there was a blur, mostly. The medicines slurred your speech as well as your sense of time. Nevertheless, the drugs wore off eventually, and you began feeling withdrawals. That's when it dawned on you that the drugs were merely a means to control your behavior. If you acted accordingly, 
they would administer you with your much needed dosage. Otherwise, it was another 30 days in solitude. And finally, the self. Burned at the stake. That's what this was. You remember the smell of human flesh as the pyre beneath her feet grew. The yelling from the crowd drowned out most of the sound of her own screams. You watched her eyes roll to the back of her head from the heat and the smoke inhalation. The fact that she couldn't see you in her final moments didn't help with the guilt, however. Instead, you just despise yourself for having manipulated this woman and for putting her in this position. You twisted her heart after gaining her trust. You were the one who lit that fire, and now you were the one watching her burn. So this is what you experience now that Gus locks eyes with you. He gives you all of that. Uh, what did you get in terms of your uh, roles for those Every individual checks? Everything except isolation and unnatural failed. Oh, okay. And just mark it also, on your sheet. Connect was a 100. On Which the one? The the role for violence. Yeah, that was one of the bloodiest times. So you're just like, you, 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 when he does that, you're just, Lucius is just sort of like, a, I, would, I would imagine him being like a mess. Like he's just kind of like, you know, like tears streaming down his eyes, like just completely overwhelmed with the wide uh, breadth of experiences that you just had in this split second moment. Did we lose? I think we lost John for a second here. We lost him. Oh, no. Uh, welcome back, John. Uh, but that's what you experience in that split second, and you're just like, you're reeling from it. How, however, you decide how you want to react, if you just want to like be paralyzed, or if you want to lash out at him, or run away, whatever you want to do. He did all of these things. I think Lucius would also know that he just wants to die, that Gus wanted to die for a majority of it. Yep. So for a very, be, very long time. It would be justice and a mercy to give him that now. Mm. So Lucius, not even thinking completely, reaches for the nearest object and rushes towards Gus. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it's just like a knife or something like right. that, that like Sean has his hunting knife or whatever. He doesn't try to stop you. The rest of you, though, see this. Like, Lucius gets like this bleary-eyed look. He looks across the table and sees the knife and he grabs it. At first, you think he might be trying to kill himself. Uh, and it, it kind of, so for most of you, it brings you back to that one moment back at the uh, House of Renunciation. Uh, and when, uh, when, uh, was it? yeah, after he had undergone that and, and Jesse found out that he was a, an automaton. Uh, but you see him instead turn and rush uh, towards Gus. Do any of you try to stop him? You don't know what just happened. He just looked at him and he was like, oh, he freaked out. And he starts rushing him with a, with a blade in his, in his hand. Jace wasn't there for that scene, but all he figures is that it, Lucius is having an episode again. And so he's going to try and stop Lucius. Okay. That's just, that's just a struggle. step over and, and, yeah. and tackle. <laughs> As Jace goes for Lucius, Damien gets in front of Gus. Oh, shit. I'm going to try to t land on that sword. Uh, that's a 21 taboo. on my struggle. So that's success. Lucius failed the struggle roll, so you made it. So you actually managed to restrain uh, Lucius, and you, Damon, you get in front of Gus, and Gus kind of puts his hand on your shoulder, and it's like, it's okay. Yeah, I know what, what you mean. It's to. okay. No, step aside. He's a monster. Let me talk to him, and he's like, uh, uh, he I tells, move. He motions with for you Gus. to let him go. <laughs> and, Jace takes yeah, the knife away from him. Jace takes the knife away from Lucius. That's the first thing. <laughs> He's like, walk with me. 
And he starts wow. leading you back out behind the motel where the body, where the digger bot is like digging up the body. And there's like a, a old cultist familiar guy and they're like, all tied up. He walks you out to that ditch and he's like, uh, uh, my time's come to an end. And he's like, uh, if you manage to stop Frank now, tonight, there is a chance that the world won't end and with me. He's like, if it's, it doesn't matter if it's you. By the way, Lucius, you physically look like you've aged like 20 years. Uh, and he's just like, it doesn't necessarily have to end. This, is, this whole thing is going to shake up the clergy. So it's possible we can push the needle on this. And he's like, but he understands what has to be done now. And I'm not going to fight it. It's, if it's my time, then it's my time. If he chooses that time to be now, he's free to choose. I've already given up my mortality a long time ago. Besides, there's some things that I don't want to live with anymore. And he kind of leaves it at that. Unless you press him on it, he's like, he kind of uh, gently uh, posits that he would like to s stay out there with Lucius and in the ditch for the next couple of minutes. Understood. It's his decision. Damien okay, is going to look at Gus and has Damien leaves. He's just going to point to Gus and goes, seeing you again soon. <laughs> he does that. And uh, as you turn and leave, uh, you get out of earshot. And then eventually he looks to you, Lucius. He's like, all right, kid. I've had mine coming for a long time now. How do you want to do this? Quick and easy. Or slow and painful. I won't stop you. You know he could. <laughs> Lucius looks him in the eye and simply asks, how do you want it done? What do you think? If I were younger, I'd say slow and painful so I could remember how it was to be alive. But unfortunately, I know all too well what that entails. <laughs> too many regrets. I hope you don't have the same. Do better, he says. Keep asking better questions. Keep making better decisions. He gives you the gun. <laughs> With the silencer on it from the occultist familiar guy. Oh, shit. Okay. This is a rank seven violence check. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> you got it, man. You can do it. You can do it. That's you a make past it? violence, yeah. That's a past. Yeah, it's all rushing back to you now. You've done this before. You shoot him, and you know he. But he. There's one thing Lucius the... says before pulling oh, yeah. the trigger. I'm gonna fix this system. One way or another. That's my boy. He says. You pull the trigger, and you could almost swear that he's smiling all the way into the ditch. The occultist familiar guy's like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" As the digger bot just finishes its work and just lays the dirt down on top of him. Ah! <laughs> Being buried alive with the uh, compensate remain. Eh, eh, Lucius has taken a life now. Might as well give him a mercy too. Not oh, you shoot him as well? Alive. <laughs> Might as well. What are you at? Just... You're, you're at violence? What, uh, what violence level? four. Wow. Make it again. <laughs> oh, man. This is a dark, dark road that Lucius spirals it into. Is. That's another success. Yeah. Wow. Two for one. You just fire, fire twice into him as he, as he gets dug up. Which eyes like staring up at you. Turn around, leave, come back in. You can go for ribs now, you think. <laughs> All right. So as he comes back in, you see the uh, the plan now is still to uh, to continue. You have a an airport that you need to raid 
Um, but you also have the Urbana Master's son, David, languishing in that mansion. How exactly do you tackle that? If Or do you even deal with it? Logistically, it wouldn't be too difficult. Most of the occultist familia goons are going to be at the ritual to protect Frank and company. So it wouldn't take much, especially with as much mojo as you guys have to throw around to be able to create a distraction to get in and get the kid out. But I'm just curious, like, how you want to go about it if you want to go that route. I have an idea. I walk Ooh. over and pick up the mask. And I walk over and I step over to Lucius and say, you may want to put this on and be someone who you're not anymore. <laughs> because we have his true name. They don't know he's gone. And that's a huge bargaining chip. So if you act like you're him, because you technically are, that's with his brilliant. face, yeah. we have his real name. And <laughs> you want to screw with Frank, and I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone here wants to fuck with Frank really bad. <laughs> yeah. We give him the true name of someone who's dead, who he thinks is alive. Excellent. And we just yeah. takes the mask. Puts it on, you look just like Gus. Welcome um, back, Gus. And <laughs> can the mask change at all, or is it now just Gus? Oh, uh, no, you can look, you can become whoever you want to look like. So, it's a chameleon mask. You can just for approach. the time being, Lucius becomes someone who he wasn't or isn't anymore. He turns mm. back into Lucius, younger ah. Lucius. Okay. So for a moment, it was Gus, and then sure. yeah. So uh, this act, this plan actually works really well, Jason. I'll tell you why. Because you never went to the mansion with Gus, or or rather, is that is that not correct, <laughs> Damien? We never went to that. We never went to the mansion. We never went. Well, actually, no. No, you we did. Went to the mansion, did. but we yes. escaped with Gus. That's that's oh, what that's you right, changed. Right. Okay. So yeah, you you still escaped. So if you okay, so if you sent him back looking like Gus. They're gonna to want to take him captive. Well, I have an axe, and they look like they have questions. So <laughs> <laughs> we should give him Gus's true name. We have Gus. You want to try to bargain the, the true name for the boy? I'm, I think I'm willing to try and do that. Let me do. It. Oh, actually, I don't know Gus's true name. Who knows Gus's true name? It'd be Sean and. and just well, at this point, I just tell it to you. It doesn't matter anymore. Gus is gone. Sure. Yeah, tell me. Really I'll, 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 I'll happily go, go bargain with them as part of the distraction. Okay, so you're gonna be like, "Hey, I'm gonna sell you this guy's real name," and meanwhile, there's like sneaking into the background, grabbing a hold of the kid and getting out. Can we, can we like? Idea? I'll be part tie, of that. Tie, tie, tie up Lucius' hands fakely, and uh... my memories are intact, right? Yeah, you remember everything that happened before. Why is yeah. I know, right now? I know, <laughs> Sean's son is dead. Yes. Wizzy's son is in the house, mm -hmm. and Frank and friends are planning to end the world at the airport. I'm, go Sean. I'm going. We need to have a talk. Uh oh. It's the talk. A talk. <laughs> no, I mean. Uh, okay. I mean, you're forgiven for hijacking 10 people. And, you don't uh, know that. <laughs> never happened. I mean, it I never, never happened. Oh, never happened. <laughs> so let's pass Sean going, yeah. Um, I mean, talk, talk about I'm, what we're about to go. If I can find head. a bottle of the hardest liquor I can find, I bring it. Two <laughs> glasses half of that and wild that. turkey, I guess. <laughs> oh, this sure. is this is a conversation, all right. And you're sure you want to do this as we're going Before into this battle. house? As we're going into this house to go get the kid? We go to the airport to get the kid. Where Frank's going to be at? But I, I thought the kid. I thought we were getting the kid before the fight with Frank. I just break it, my like son. Your son's dead. Do you believe him? And you, you, you can give me a glass for that. Why? 
I am he, pouring one. I'm, I'm going to. I'm giving him the bottle. Yeah, I'm taking the bottle. Um, I know it's bad timing. And, and he, he just, like, downs it. Like, uh, um, You believe him? I'm trying not to. Make a helplessness check. Excuse, excuse. And technically speaking, Jace was there as well, right? So. Yeah. And this time, Gus was with you as well. So that means Lucius knows too. That is correct. Helplessness is fitness, right? Uh, Family status. Uh, hmm? Helplessness is fitness, yeah. Fitness dodge. Okay. So I need to roll under a 50 for this? 50 50 chance. 64. That's a failure. How do you react? Fight, flight, or you know, freeze. That's that's rules is written. You can react however you like. How how long? How long, we Damien? S- we saw his body at the mansion. Fucking Christ! It, it, and you didn't. What? He thought it was gonna get better with time. Was it like a fucking whiskey? He just gets better with age. What? Why didn't you tell me? Also, was, you asked that you question. Sure, you, you sure it was him? You're positive. You're fucking one hundred percent. Damien looks it was him. Lucius knows. What kind of fucking bullshit is this? Who in the hell? And then you think fucking wants to get a goddamn kid. You say that, and then you think, oh right, this is Gus we're talking about and his people, and you realize like Gus has been you know playing everybody. He's been not telling you, not being straight with you. He's been leading you down. Uh, he's been feeding you all the information that's necessary, uh, you know, to to do what he needs you to do, you know. Oh my god. Are you fucking like backing him up? Is that is that what the angle here is? Just like get me to fucking play in your goddamn marionette strings? Are you How talking long? to me? Yeah, Are I'm fucking talking, talking to, to you. I'm not playing with anyone. I'm just look. You need to know I told you. He's being honest with you, you can tell. He's not lying. Uh, but yeah, you feel like an incredible amount of resentment, uh, I would imagine, at least. Uh, you can prove me wrong otherwise. Uh, towards Gus uh, and towards anybody who uh, he, he considers his protege. In this case, Jace was with him as well. And they didn't say anything. Actually, Jace started to say something when they first got together and Damien got him to stop. Ah, So you probably remember that too. Mm. I'm gonna fucking have questions for each and every goddamn one of you. That's fair. And you're all gonna fucking have to answer to me at the end of the day, and whether I make it out or not, or you do, or let's paint a pretty fucking picture and we both do. 
You're going to have to answer to me. You Anything to add to Lucius? Do. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're fucking lucky. Yes, I am. That I got one more goddamn person higher on this list. So tell me, why would you take it out on us? We're not the one who kidnapped your kids. We're not the one who killed him. Yeah, retained information for a day or two. But who are you to threaten me or us? We've been backing you 100% from, the, from day one. And then you flip. I understand your, your rage. I don't understand your rage. No, you don't. But take that rage and focus it where it needs to be focused. You, you, and it's not you really, us. You really fucking don't. And uh, I'm not going to, you know what? I will approach this with a level head when I'm good and goddamn ready. And right now you are is not, not the time. <laughs> so I'm going to do y'all a favor. And I am going to grab, and, and I grab the whiskey. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go and have a drink with a dead man. And he's going to walk out to the grave and just sit next to the grave. Wow. All right. The little digger so, robot probably beeps and pushes a little dirt over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you have that confrontation with the group as a whole. Uh, are you still planning? You, you still go through this plan where you try to sell this information to uh, the occultist familia at the mansion? Uh, I, what is well, the... I, I, I thought the plan was to go to confront uh, Frank and everyone at the, at the airport where they're having the ritual, because if we go anywhere else, it's not really going to be. We're not going to have time. Got it. Okay. If you go there, it's, it was just a, it's just a way to distract them. There's no way we're going to get the kid out uh, at any time. We don't, have, we don't have time for that. And I think Wizzy and even pretty understood that as well. We have to find a way to, to get them distracted and before we can get in there and stop them. This is a way gotcha. to, to get us. It was the way to get us in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. And, It'll get um, you in. And then, and if you decide to tackle the, the airport first, you have the, the help of, of Eustace and his uh, adepts exactly. at the very least. Of, yeah. So, yeah, that's actually not a bad idea to do it in reverse order. Um, the airport itself is pretty, uh, abandoned this late at night, at least. And, uh, you see the Eve and, and, uh, Wizzy make contact with you. Uh, Eustace and the rest of his adepts are ready to go. They have their arms and equipment ready. You don't know where the sleepers are in all this, but you, you can feel them in the background. You wanted to say something, Corey? Yeah, so since I still have a major charge, since yeah. that never got spent, uh, I would like to build a major charge robot using, like, we're not going to be able to use dozens of these teeth, right? It said take <laughs> no, there's one. there's like dozens of oh them. Like, you God. take one and it lasts like 30 minutes yeah, or so. Yeah, so I'm going to put dozens of these teeth and the biggest weapons I can find in a robot shell and give it <laughs> nothing but, you know, combat and dodge. Just major creation. Go for it. Oh, shit. So you're going to make a Terminator that shoots teeth? Oh, fuck yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it, it consumes teeth. Was that to, was that well, to shoot? Well, that was to shield, well, it, right? It could, it could have the teeth as, like, a shield, but if it shot the teeth and it was able to get the teeth inside the Thanatum answer, it would stop his magic. And wow, potentially oh kill him God. in the process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a viable plan, actually. That's a good idea. I'm gonna force feed you this tooth, and you're yeah. gonna like it. <laughs> okay. Can we can we bring uh, in the bot tooth fairy? Because that that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I I'm all, I'm all part of it. Uh, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, what what does this thing look like? Well, if it's gonna get called the Tooth Fairy, it should it should have wings. 
uh but they're like <laughs> armor they're like armor plates that like try to catch any bullets coming in at it uh oh nice and uh i don't know other than that probably just because it's got to be made out of like are there with a major charge it can look like anything at once so i don't know Pretty i'll much, let yeah. i'll let it pick its own form when it's done <laughs> oh my god Plus, it probably has like a long snout i imagine that looks like a rifle and that's you can just basically pour the teeth into the thing and it just kind of like cycles through and just like do, 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 just you know shoots it out at like rapid uh, mm -hmm. acceleration and just like do, 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 just you know <laughs> shoot people with their things with the teeth I think that's that's how i imagine it anyway uh like a really big mosquito or something with wings sure I, I would hand over all the teeth, all teeth but one. Cool. For myself. Ah, for to protect yourself. Okay, good idea. Yeah, you all, all everybody except for Lucius perhaps, may take one uh, with you for this particular battle so you can make yourself immune to the effects of some of these uh, adepts magic, of which there are varied, uh, different different kinds of magic present. Yeah, I would There's take like one. at least a... Uh, there's like a half dozen or so of these occultist familia, two dozen I would probably say. Um, the Urbanomancers come back uh, to you and they're like, look, this this is what's going down. This is where the, everybody's location is. Um, we can disrupt the ritual, that's not a problem. It's getting to the ritual uh, markings that's on the tarmac where the Thanathomancer is located. We need to undo them. We need to mar them, so break that up. Otherwise, they could if they complete the ritual tonight, they can break a seam in the veil and everybody's going to start getting possessed. It's going to be New Hampshire all over again. It's like, so we need to, we need to group up and decide what exactly is going to be the priority here. Uh, some of us need to go and deal with the Thanatomancer, but there's also Frank Gordon himself. Um, and then there's the issue of you and he points to Sean, Sean, uh, it's like your double is in there, your twin or whoever that is. You see, uh, Wizzy says, "Who's gonna deal with that guy?" Suppose that I'm going to. I'm gonna. Who's gonna deal with Frank? Suppose I will. Wait, you can't take them both on at the same time. That's suicide. Did I stutter? <laughs> okay. Oh, look. I can take Gus in to Frank and distract him, giving Sean a better opening. And you, you're going to engage with Frank. That was the, I, that's the idea. Is I'll engage with Frank as I'm turning over Gus to him with Gus's name to see if that gets okay. us in and distracts him long enough for Sean to do what Sean does best in the situation: deal with Frank. Okay. Is that great to you, Sean. However you want to do it. So, Sean, you're going to go after your split and look for an opportunity to go after Frank while Jace is uh, distracting him. Uh, Lucius, what do you want to do? You have some new powers, my friend. Yeah. You can make eye contact with somebody and give them a rank 1 to rank 10 stress check of your choice because you've lived them all. Ooh, that's a special to save for Frank Gordon. Yeah, I was... Hmm. I think I'll hmm. <laughs> pretend to be Gus. Get handed over and then just stare Frank oh. down into we helplessness. Might be, maybe we should put like a gag over you or something. He doesn't may not know Gus's powers altogether, but you know, we'll, we'll make it look good. He was Remember, Gus's Frank student. Was... Yes. I'm pretty sure oh. he knows what Gus can do. We should I don't know. No, no, what were you thinking? I don't think he would believe it if we brought Frank, or if we brought Gus in a hood. He wouldn't believe it, so well, you he has to see Gus's face. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, he has the mask, so he can look however he wants. Uh, it just it depends on how you approach him as Gus, like how you want to sell it to him. I don't know, Gus, do you remember anything about Frank that would help? Oh, you know all about Frank. You also know some things that you probably won't, don't want anybody else to know. Mm -hmm. 
Since you know Frank Secret better than anybody else coming. at this point. Uh oh. Since you know Frank better than anybody else here, you're the best. You're the best person to tell us how to approach approach you, approach bringing you to him, selling you to him. Yeah. I figured me trying to sell you as immunity to the apocalypse, because as far as Frank knows, I don't care any shit about you guys. Drink. Uh, how, about a, something, uh, drink. Key? how about a cigarette instead? <laughs> Goose just reaches over, just like a gimme. Please. Here's a cigarette. All right. So we Sean. have Jace versus Frank, Sean versus the split. Uh, the Bannermancers are going to concentrate on the occultist familia and drawing them away from you all while you focus on somebody needs to deal with the Thanatomancer specifically. The teeth cannon and and myself, I think, will go for the the yes, mage. Yeah. Teeth cannon. And teeth I'll cannon. bring one of the yeah. PepsiCo okay. Uzis with me. <laughs> the anti tooth fairy. The AKs, Can... they're AKs, man. They're collision the cost. Um, silly question, but uh, could I spend one of my uh, minor mechanomancy charges to give myself some firearm skill? Um, how would that work? Oh, do you, are you? Is it? Does it allow you to? No, I don't know. Like, skill, yeah, well, because like when you're creating a mechanomancy creation, you can give it more points with charges, right? For skills, I was wondering if I could like, I don't know, but I'm just trying to figure it out because I'm not really a good gun shooter. No, oh, yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, right. it's fine. That's a, that's a, the you could use suppressive fire with the, with yeah. something like an AK, uh, and that could clear people out of your way like they basically have to make stress checks uh, when if they want to actively not die for cover essentially is what it comes down to so uh you can open up the the floor for your tooth fairy the to, familia to the, uh... the familia had a sniper right no not that you know of we have one no 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 like the ex familia sorry yes you used this and their group they had a sniper right Oh, yes. Yes, the Fulgy mode. Can I yeah. request some backup for the Thanatomancer? Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. situation. She's going to be picking people off from a distance. Doing the bang bang thing. Sure. All right. So that's Sophia and you versus the Shiko. All right. Sophia. Uh, Eustace and the rest of the group will be dealing with the uh, Coldest Familia along with their Banomancers. The only exception is Sophia. She's going to provide cover fire for you to basically go to the Dynatomancer and take him down. Um, excellent. All right. So I think that's everybody. Damien, uh, did you. Damien needs to charge up. up. Okay. Damien has <laughs> zero charges everywhere. Um, what do you want to get? Like significant or minor? Minors. Minors? Mostly. Take four. Uh, you get roughed up at a uh, on the street the the night before. You come out smelling like beer, cigarettes, and blood. <laughs> you wander into the wrong bar at the wrong time, or maybe it's the wrong bar at the right time. Then you come out with like four charges worth of shit, worth of Take a shower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who did you want to like focus on specifically? Uh, like a specific group or an individual within the for the battle. Choose carefully. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat teeth all day, but it's not gonna save you against you know somebody willing an automatic uh, assault rifle or something like that. Um. Sean is going for Frank and mm -hmm. who again? Who's the other one? The Frank split. And... He's got the Frank, split. the split. You got the Thanatomancer, and then you have the Occultist Familia goons, of which there's like twenty of them. I'm gonna try to help Sean deal with Frank and his split. 
Ah, excellent. Okay, so Damien's in that fight. Uh, who else is left? I think that leaves just uh, Lucius. <laughs> Did you want to confront confront uh, your protege, oh, Frank my... Gordon? <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. Oh, That's this, gonna be a neat this... scene. You broke me. Oh. You, you broke me. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Yeah. That's a plan. Yes. So, the uh, your Batomancers have a very interesting plan for the occultist family that are gathered on the tarmac. It involves using the city to their benefit. A lot of these uh, transient people that are, are surrounding the area of the airport and some of the metropolitan areas, they show up in mass numbers. And you see, like, they're they're not holding signs. They're not there to protest and shit. They're wielding, like, Molotov cocktails, clubs, pipes, chains, and they're pissed as fuck. And they, they initially, they rush in towards the, from the the right side of the gate like they tear down the chain link fence that's there they don't give a shit they start charging onto the tarmac that draws the attention of the occultist familia and suddenly shots start ringing out but they hold up their hand like not yet because they're not done with with their using their abilities yet suddenly traffic gets redirected and there's several mac trucks that come through barreling through the the uh the gate as well on the other side and they start just ramming the side of the airport where Frank and the rest of the family are located. So there's like petroleum and fire spreading through all uh, throughout the tarmac, lighting shit and people on fire. Ah! Uh, they are completely confused. They're being overwhelmed by this mob. And on the other side, you've got the the tankers that are exploding and spreading fire all over the all over the joint. Uh, one second here. And uh, once once that happens, you see the um, the occult of familiar goons. They're split. They're having to deal with the this mob that's just overrunning them and just beating them into submission. And then like these cars are coming in off the street and just randomly ramming them, running them over, hitting the side of the the, the uh, uh, hitting the side of the building, and creating this massive clusterfuck. They don't know what's going on, so they start using their magic, and that's when everybody starts t- swallowing a tooth or two. Uh, on the runway itself is Ishiko Tanaka in traditional robes, wielding what seems to be some sort of like a ceremonial knife. Uh, there are these like sigils around him that are starting to glow as the night wears on. And you can all see and hear the, the spirits of the dead echo throughout uh, the tarmac as the ritual is coming, becoming closer and closer uh, to becoming fulfilled. Frank and the split are off to the side, exiting the, the airport just as this is happening. They see the fire, they see the flames, the gunfire popping off, and they're like, ah, here it comes, the last, you know, uh, the cavalry has arrived, as it were. Sean, uh, Sean's split and Frank start to disrobe, take all their clothes off, and they start walking out onto the tarmac. That's when you start showing up. Um, Sophia starts taking out uh, occultist familia goons like from a distance. Ba ba ba. Um, so they're not a problem for you as you're rushing in, however you want to go in. So finally, you come face to face with the man himself in the flesh, so to speak, because it's not actually Frank Gordon's body. It's Williams, your ancestor, John, uh, Sean. And he's like, "You like the new look?" He says. You're Welcome back, deserving. son. And he's like, oh, what, you're going to kill me? And you're going to, what, rub yourself and everybody else down the line out of existence? I don't think so. You couldn't even if you tried. What the fuck are you doing here? He looks over at uh, you, Lucius. <laughs> I'm assuming that you're guised as Gus. Gus disguise. He's like, how appropriate. I've got him. I've got uh, Gus in a, in a very false arm lock. It falls to falls to Gus, not falls to anybody else. 
No, but I have a gift for you, Mr. Gordon. You wanted oh, him really? and you want his true name, don't you, still? Oh, it's far too late for that, I'm afraid. It's never He's too like, late. Can you get the memo? He looks over I to, don't uh, care about uh, Sean's son. I'm making a deal for me. <laughs> he smiles and laughs. You see, uh, Sean Split looks to him and looks back at him and is like, I'm listening. Oh, good. I have your attention. You're going to do all this. I want to survive. Okay. I can survive along with you and your people. You get Gus and his uh, true name. You want to survive? And he's like, he looks around and like the chaos that's, so unless he wanted this to happen before the fireworks popped off. <laughs> no worry, we'll just, we'll deal with it. He's just like, I'm afraid it's a little too late for that. But as it were, the sigils were just a way to get the occultist familia on my side. I don't care I how the world ends, as long as it ends tonight, he says. And he's like, show him what you're made of, son. Show him what daddy taught you. And he looks around at, at the rest of you and he's like, you all are just preoccupied with too much shit, aren't you? And he kind of waves his hand and suddenly you see your clothes start to burst into flames. Oh, it's a good thing we all had our tooth, huh? <laughs> yeah. You are not bothered at all by the flames, but your clothes, on the other hand, are shit. <laughs> they just eh. burst into flames. And he's like, that's the thing about annihilants, you, you see. It gets rid of things that don't matter anymore. And right now, you don't fucking matter to nobody. And then when they, they see the flames on you and they just die away, uh, and they're just like, they look at each other and they look back at, at you like, okay, I, what's I, your I, secret? I let, I let Gus go in front of him, and I say he's all yours. I don't think, but I don't. I don't say it to Frank. I say it to Lucius. He's all yours. He's like I expected this from you, Gus. But then again, this was your plan to begin with. I just had the balls to pull it off. What do you say to that? I'm. You know, I'm impressed. I really am glad you could approve now you can watch everyone else around you die again <clears throat> yep. take a couple steps forward just very nonchalant just he doesn't really worry do. about you he's just kind of like him and sean are both armed as everybody else is here and they take aim at like jace and uh sean and damien uh, you're not bothered by the Annihilamency Blast. I just went out from them, just, and just wiped you, cleanse you with flames for the most part. Part of your clothes still clinging onto you. You look like a uh, a superhero, like all battered up at the end of the comic book, but uh, you're you're perfectly fine. Not a hair singed on you. How do you respond? Lucius, as quickly as possible, takes out that silenced pistol and tries to take out Frank. Okay, make me a roll. If you don't have firearms, oh, of course you have firearms. Go ahead and roll. <laughs> <laughs> however that high you a... roll is how much damage you make, essentially, unless you roll 100. That is an 8. An 8. Mm. You can, do you uh, want to flip it? B, uh, hmm. Okay. <laughs> I, if I flip it, I don't succeed. No, uh. you do. I do. Because remember, you're Gus now. Uh, all right. You're really good at this. <laughs> Time to oh, flip it. Oh my god. It hey. is like out of fear. Right between the eyes, just and Frank just has this look of terror on his face, like he really just did do that. And the last words as he like falls to his knees is just like, it's already too late. He kind of falls over to the side. Just then you see, uh, they hear this screaming, wailing sound coming from the tarmac. And the some of the people nearby, the Thanatomancer, who's wearing like this death mask, um, start becoming possessed. It's starting to happen. He's already breaching the veil. 
Um, actions for Jace. You see Sean split, sees that, and he's like, takes aim. Uh, you're not. He, he's like, uh, he takes aim at one of you to try to shoot I, you. I, my goal is to get, is get him to aim and shoot at shoot Jace. Not anyone else. So that, was Sean, that, that way Sean gets his moment to get him. He easily does that. He's like, you're a fucking poser. He just like aims a gun at you, fires away at you. Uh, I rolled a 19. All right. If well, you take full, 19 points full. of damage, roll your full. Full, two, full check. Here we go. You make it. It, it gets shifted off to somebody else. You choose. Oh, fuck. Oh, uh, 585. <laughs> um, I will flip it and it will cause me to hit it. So I hit, hit my thing dead on. So. Woo! All right. Who takes the damage instead out of the ones that are nearby? Oh, really? That's your call. Um, Would it give uh, me a charge? If I don't I would, choose, would it give me a charge? It, it is random. Yeah, who, I don't who, choose. Who the, bullet hits, hit. who the bullet hits is random. Yeah, but when it, when it comes to accruing charges, he has to knowingly put himself at risk. Oh, okay. I, I can't choose who it's it goes ver- to, it's... so. Oh, you can't choose? No. No, I have to be, have to be random in turn by the GM. That's oh, fine. Shit. I have uh, I have uh, an alternative. So then, Sean, Lucius, and Damien roll a die. Roll a d10. Whoever rolls highest gets hit. <clears throat> oh. Oh, oh Lucius That would be hit. Lucius lucky. lucky. So you're just like... You're like, oh, <laughs> he tries to shoot you, and instead it like diverts, it like a magnet, it just goes, whoop, boom, but, and hits, uh, no it damage. hits Gus slash Lucius instead, just, no damage whatsoever, and he's just like, the fuck. <laughs> oh, Supernatural look shit behind you. <laughs> uh, Damien, Q- Q- Sean. Oh yes, yeah. Sean with the fire axe. Come on. Yeah, Sean. What's, what's Sean going to do about this? Uh, well, Sean's going to deal with one problem at a time, so he's going to ask himself a question. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, and he's he's not going to say anything. He's going to go... I, I, I picture in my head, Jay, Jace is going to get out, like, look behind, and then the axe is going to come down. And as it's he's hitting him with the axe he finishes you mm. nice look behind you <laughs> yeah go ahead Fuck. and roll uh roll your hunter and give yourself a a plus 20 percent chance to hit nice. along with it i would the like it's not dodging right the split can't dodge okay he acted and now that you're you're going so so you went before you my warrior is high enough it allows me to substitute roles now okay yeah yeah it does so i would like to substitute my warrior for this one which is at 71 percent plus 20. yeah guaranteed to hit well why (laughs) eight percent chance of not oh Oh my god okay that's that's a seven that wasn't a roll that wasn't a (laughs) roll so you could yeah so that so that's no, that that's wasn't weapon damage, right? So it's you add those was, numbers together and then you add six, right? He because could, it's heavy. No, and it, that, it, that it, wasn't a, that wasn't a, that's that not was just random. my value. Oh. That's the value. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll use. Oh, you no, still I, got it. I made it. Yeah. That's good. That's better. <laughs> 86 bucks. So that's uh, 14 plus six. So that's 20 points of damage right there in one shot. Just, now you're pretty. Now he is you, right? What's your wound points? Oh. My wound points? I have no idea. Look on your sheet. I think it's 50, isn't it? Everyone starts at 50, yeah. That's uh, special. Yes. <laughs> okay. So he's almost halfway dead. <laughs> just right now. Just one hit. Just whack! Like, you sink it right in deep into his chest. And you, like, he's just like, ugh! But he, I mean, he's a big guy. He's you. So, like, yeah. he takes the hit. And he's just like, ugh! And I got... And he's like... I was a better dad than you, you piece of shit, he says. I I grab the head of the axe, and I just like, we'll never know. We're not going to, we'll never know we don't exist. Let's try and slam slam him in the ground and bury that axe into his heart. Oh, man. 
bearing the hatchet, go round. You 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 hit him with such uh, such directness and such strength that you actually knock him off his feet, knock him to the ground. We try to push it into his heart. He grabs a hold of you, and you're like locked into the struggle. And he's like, "I was a better dad than you, you piece of shit." And he spits in your face with his blood. Uh, Damien, you're up. You think so these guys have it covered for the most part with the split? Maybe you're not sure, but you look back and the Thanatomancer is like getting assaulted by the, the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> what are you doing? By the Tooth Fairy. Uh, <laughs> Official name. So how does it work for the uh, Tooth Fairy shooting? It has to successfully hit the Thanatomancer. And Who's rolling it for it? He is loses it, charges. Yeah. Is 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 it Jesse or is like? Does the 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 tooth Jesse fairy has its own stats? Me- Jesse, has, uh, yeah, the the tooth fairy has its own stat. I would have Jesse uh, roll for the or Corey make the roll for the mechanomancy automaton, but or I could roll either way. Doesn't matter. But, but the thing is, is that the 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 automaton has a skill for shooting guns. Uh no, it's it basically he fashioned this thing to shoot things out. It's not a gun. It's just like this weird construct that fires teeth, those teeth that you acquire yep. out of its snout. But mechanically, is it considered like shooting a gun? Is it like oh, the total it of the fire- No, it doesn't do firearms damage. It does like one point of damage. <laughs> but if you're a mage, it completely kills your, your charges. So you're you're useless, at least in that regard. All right. Uh, when, and it is going to shoot at the 10th, tenth- to Nath- uh, it is focusing at the Thanatomancer, yeah. Thanatomancer. Okay, I will spend three charges and I will cast on the automaton for his shot. I'm going to cast double or nothing. Oh, okay. And it costs me three charges. What does that do? Yep. Uh, let's take a look over here. So. Double and nothing, the world around you bends to your swagger and confidence. Add a boost, your next roll equal to dispel the roll rounded down to the tens digit. So if I roll okay. uh, a, a 40, a f- he gets like 40%. If I if I roll a D and I get a four, he gets 40. If I get a five, he gets 50% extra. So he gets a bonus. Wow, that is crazy Which, good. All right. Which... If I may, I'm not sure if this helps your roll or not. You do get at least a, a, is it a 10% bonus for being with me in combat. Yes, yes, you do. Everybody does, as a matter of fact. Yeah. All right, Excellent. so that means I roll Anthropomancy. And I have a 10% on that? Yeah, I would say oh, so. Wow, okay. I got a match Mass success. success. Nice. You. <laughs> so that um, uh and then that's you only a die that's no it's only i uh, then then I, I i round it down and it's a 10 though so the it would only get a 10 percent boost to its next shot that's not bad though because it gets 20 percent effectively with uh sean's uh avatar ability. so that means a plus 30 percent excellent uh, Jesse, you want to roll for your uh, Tooth Fairy? Tooth Fairy. The Thanatomancer sees this thing coming and doesn't know what the fuck it is, and it's just like... Yeah, I mean, it basically had, like, two uh, purposes, like that, and it also has firearms, so... Uh, and I gave it the PepsiCo weapon, because... Uh, <laughs> oh, then... it also has the AK? Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the... Um... I'm assuming since it only had two purposes and it has full character creation that it has like a 75 in okay. in in shooting these teeth. So that makes Plus that a 30 90. Plus for me. <laughs> yeah, that makes it a 95. Uh, like it basically is not possible for well, it to fail. But oh actually, yes, it, wow, we got really <laughs> oh, good <terms>. yes. <laughs> wait, wait, dodge wait. that. Dodge a 92. Well, if it was at 75 yeah. and it gets plus 30, it's 105. Yeah. So there's yeah, no way for it to fail. Only a hundred. Only on a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. excellent. So yeah, you nailed the fucking Thanatomancer as he's like trying to use death magic to like pull. You see him pull a demon out of through the veil. Like this, it looks like a purple rift in space and time. And like you see 
faces of, the, of dead people coming out like, oh shit, he pulls one of them out and you hear you hear a voice behind you when he does this, Sean, you hear, dad? Oh man. And you're like, what? And you look behind you and you see the the the, the soul that the, the Thanatomancer plucked out of the veil is your son. And he's holding them there like this. And he's like, fuck him up, dad. <laughs> Uh, just then, the the Tooth Fairy shoots this guy, and he loses all of his powers. And he's like, oh! And the veil starts to shrink, the, the sigils start to die down, and uh, the, the, the the charges that he's been pumping into this ritual die off. And now it's vulnerable to disruption. I yell out to uh, the sniper to take that shot. You take this shot? You focus on the Thanos Demancer? Well, I yelled to their sniper the to take the shot. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, roll. 41. That's a pretty good shot. With the bonus. Yeah. She just long shot. Boom! Takes a shot. And you see the, the, the Thanatomancer spins on one axis. It's like, oh, and he falls down. He's still alive. He's crawling towards it. And, like, he's... He, the, the ghost of... Um, the spirit self of uh, Jackson can't really do anything. Uh, but he can possess someone. So he's just like, I'll help you, Dad. And like he runs up and you see like he like he moves like 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 he kind of dissipates a little bit as he's moving, but he suddenly he's behind uh you and like you see the the split is just like I'm gonna finish you right now. Uh, and he kind of like pushes you up. And like launches you through like over over overhead and like knocks you onto the pavement. And then he tries to basically mount you and use your own axe to behead you. Uh give me one more struggle roll, Sean. I need you to beat a th I need you to just make a successful roll roll above a three, because he <laughs> rolled a three. You got that close. <laughs> Chopping your head off. Oh You're well, wrong. no, you don't have to. You don't have to roll struggle because remember, you could substitute your avatar skills. So it's whatever your avatar oh. skill is. Yeah, you're that good now. Which is um, seventy. So I beat him. <laughs> make it a seventy-one now. You're in the next bracket because yeah, he tries to like chop your head off, and you instead like use the the edge to st the other end of the the axe to stab it further into his chest, and he's like, ugh. That's when your son uses his uh, his only uh, opportunity to try to take possession of him, and you see he's just like oh, he's like he. Uh, that's when he like he's strong. He's really tough, and um, when he takes possession of him, it throws him off just in time. That it gives you it gives you the opportunity to to perform the the coup de grace, as it were, and just you know go Conan on if you want to lock so, it up. So he doesn't see Jackson. He doesn't see anything outside of him and himself. Yeah, you just, you just heard right it. Now. Hold on, Dad! And, yeah, he, like, takes like, half his brain registers that. The other half takes the axe with a palm, shoves it into his chest, flips him over, and then once he's, like, coughing up blood, he just, like, zones in on this guy, and he takes his foot, and without describing the details the <laughs> he just fucking slams his foot on the bottom of the like where the axe and the haft meet the haft and the, sh the shaft and the head meet and he's just going to stomp on it over and over again Ooh. yeah he's gone he's super huh. gone <laughs> well done so the split is finished uh the, yeah these shit took a lot of damage and okay i think i covered everybody uh uh, Jesse, did Jesse want to do something specific other than just uh, command the uh, the two fairy? Jesse doesn't really have much in the way of combat ability, and gave the AK to the tooth That's fairy. Fine. So the tooth They're fairy can useful. take a couple shots. I think it would try to shoot it with another tooth, which it basically can't miss, uh, as we've determined. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, because the the thing said, you know, multiple, not suggested. 
So I'm hoping that it has some terrible side effect if you have more than one. Well, it's a 30 year old tooth stuck in somebody's body. Like, that's yeah. not good for anyone. <laughs> um, Jace, did you want to take any additional actions? Because you were just basically like, shoot, shoot at me, shoot at me. Yeah, no, no, no. Actually, there's not much for him to do at this point because combat abilities don't exist for Jace. Uh, so. Okay. <laughs> You're just like, uh, hide. It's, it's, uh, no, it's hide. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fun. Um, the, the battle turns pretty quickly because uh, the rest of the occultist family goons are overwhelmed and they're having to basically scatter at this point. And uh, that's when the sleepers move in. As, the, as they're trying to exit the airport, the sleepers move in and you see them pull up in like black SUVs and shit. And as they're, as they're coming out, they try to fire on, the, uh, on any of the sleepers, their guns don't work. They try to use their magic, doesn't work on them. Some, some of them, as soon as the sleepers come into view, some of them start feeling sick and like double over. And the sleepers just walk, like there's just a varied assortment of people that get out of the SUVs with black masks on and shit. And they come out with silenced weapons and just, and they start like just mob style shooting them down as they're trying to get away. Some of them inevitably like slip through, but mo the majority of the 20 something occultist familia goons that are on the tarmac are dead. I want to get a hold of that death mage if he's still alive. Deathmate is trying to crawl away, but he's bleeding to death from a sniper shot. And probably after the second shot that she takes, he is super dead. Uh, or actually, the second shot opens up a huge hole in his chest, and he's still going. He's still he's a death mage, so he kind of keeps going. He's like, Ugh. and you see, like he's trying to animate the corpses nearby, like to help him, and he just he has no charges. He's like, fuck. Uh, so you I'll have try, an opportunity. I'll, to, I'll tell the fairy to try to stick a tooth in his gut now that there's a hole there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it easily just, you know, just puts one in there. Uh, but you see the guy who ritually murdered Jackson trying to crawl away, uh, Sean. Uh, I'm going to take I'm gonna take the axe out and just grab it. And with a fireman's axe, there's literally two parts to it, right? Mm -hmm. You got the head and then you got the spike on the other side. Yeah. So he's going to take the spike and just jam it into his shoulder, mm. lift him up with one hand and grab him by the neck. Ugh. And he's going and he's just going to like take the axe and tear and squeeze and see what happens. Oh, yeah, he falls apart like pulled pork. He's just like Pfft. Yeah, it's gruesome, uh, which is probably well deserved. His blood isn't even normal. It's like this blackish goo that splashes out. There's like maggots and shit crawling around in it, and you're just disgusted by it. Uh, he's a, he's making a, a natural check. Yeah, he's a death mage, so he's not going to stop until he stops twitching. Oh, yeah. No doubt. You hack the crap out of it. Once you're done, you're just exhausted on the tarmac as sure. everything's burning around you. Uh, Damien, you see this for sure with your aura sight. You see, after everyone's they're defeated before Sean. Uh, the apparition of Jackson is sort of looming over him as he's like exhausted like this, resting on the ax. His hand is just on his shoulder. But soon the aperture that the Thanatomancer opens starts to weave back closed again. You, you catch the, an image of some sort of a silhouette, some sort of a form behind the veil, something with wings. And it, it holds out a hand like this and you see the uh, Jackson's apparition app apprehensively reaches back out and gets pulled through the veil as the veil closes back up and reseams itself. And the battle is over. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So, sometime later, an undetermined amount of time later after the battle that took place at the airport we find our cabal in a in the snake pit where all of this began a long time ago it seems um angela Forsyth is there along with her her bodyguard she has you sitting around her in this large table the bar is busy as as it normally is 
Lucius, so if, unless you're wearing the mask, they recognize you and they, you know, they wave at you. But she sits her, she sits you down and she's like, um, well, that was quite a spectacular finish to Frank Gordon and his special plan to end the world. I'm glad we could work together with this. But I'm one to always uphold my end of a bargain. We assisted you and you assisted us in, in kind. You wanted a clean slate, did you not? Are you all still in agreement so that this is what you all wanted? I'm done. You've sacrificed so much. You've lost so much. It's understandable that you want to walk away from this forever. Completely understand. He says. We can make that happen. We can restart things as it, as it, as it were. I'm just going to go and find... Hold my hand. She, says. And she holds out her hands around for everybody to like grab each other's hand to form a circle around the table. Does everyone participate? Chase looks at uh, Lucius and says, what do you say, boss? Blank slate. No Take it if you want. Slate. I'll pass. I got a job. I look at her. I got a job. Fine. You can excuse yourself from this. Oh, stand up and step back. Everybody but Jace? Everyone but Jace and Lucius. Okay. Uh, Jesse probably doesn't either. You don't. You step away. You're like, whatever. Um, the rest of you, though, she delivers on her promise. Oh, Lucius, do you are you part of this too or no? Lucius is not part of this. Damien, are you part of this? Ah, okay. So you pardon yourself <laughs> from that. Uh, the rest of you, though, she holds hands with you and she's like a clean slate for you both. And she looks that deeply into both of your eyes. And the next thing you know, you don't know how you got here. You don't, you're not exactly sure who this person is or who these people are. Who are you again? Oh, Have a nice life, she says. She gets up, leaves a tip on the table, and walks out of the snake pit. Your clean slate is is at hand. Any, uh, particularly for Sean. Any of the terrible, tragic memories that you've uh, you've experienced, all the failed and hardened checks that uh, are in your character sheet, you can get rid of them now. You don't remember exactly how you got here, who these people are, but. Man, you're hungry. You can go for some beer and pretzels. I can make some tacos. I'm not, I mean, everybody here want tacos? Yeah, tacos sound and, nice. that's where, and that's where we'll stop. <laughs> All right. Sorry for going a little long on that one, everybody. Hope you understand. This is the finale, after all. Uh, I hope everyone here and those watching enjoyed the show. Uh, this will conclude our, our story for Unknown Armies. If you enjoyed tonight's program, feel free to check out our other awesome adventures and terrifying tales. In the way of awesome adventures, Tuesday we have Dystopia Rising Evolution, Trouble on the Steel Pier on the Onyx Path channel. Wednesdays we have Rift Rebellious One Shot uh, for uh, Love Your Rebellion. Fridays it's Scarred Lands, Draco Genesis Season 2. Saturday it's Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden on Saturdays beginning September 4th. For Terrifying Tales, on Mondays, we have Delta Green, Dirge for the End of the World. Tuesdays, check out Chronicles of Darkness, Mage the Awakening, Book One, Defiance. Fridays is Black Void, Under Nebulous Skies. Saturday is the Crash Panda's Drunken One-Shot Beta. And later this evening, we bring you the V20 Anniversary Chronicles, Starlight and Smoke. In the coming soon category, we have uh, Cult Divinity Lost on Sundays, starting September 12th. All right, uh, and that's it for the show, everybody. I've been. At, uh, let's uh, reintroduce ourselves uh, as we sort of always do. 
Uh, beginning with uh, Mike, tell the good people who, who you are, who you play this evening, and uh, uh, where they can see you next. Uh, well, uh, again, Mike Leader. Uh, you can find me online at Dr. Fusion with the Z. Um, looking forward to see what happens next. I think next we're working on um, Fiasco, I believe. So that's, I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out. Yes, we'll begin our long-awaited Fiasco game next week with the Murderists at the usual time at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, John, tell the good people who you are and who you played this evening. Uh, I played Mr. Sean Krogan Fjord. Um, I am John, otherwise known as J3 Billion, and you can catch me next time, uh, is going to be on Friday for Scarlet and Strike of Genesis, uh, and then back here again on Sunday. Nice. All right. Uh, Key. Yeah. Hello. I'm Kisama, and you can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama, and I have been Lucius Gus? <laughs> a few people, maybe. <laughs> and I will Excellent. continue to be people. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Always behind uh, the Denny's. Mm, <laughs> always behind always, the Denny's, yes. Always behind Alan. the Denny's. Hey guys, I'm Alan, your Eldritch Keeper. You can find me on Twitter and Twitch as the Eldritch Keeper. And for this amazing Unknown Army Games, I have been playing Damien Darkwood. The body bag that surprisingly did not end up in a body bag. <laughs> so that was very, very interesting. Uh, you can find me next uh, on Tuesdays for Chronicle of Darkness, Mage the Awakening. Uh, after that, on Saturdays for, I do believe, Mutant Year Zero. And on Sundays for Fiasco. All right, and uh, Corey. And hey, I'm Corey, aka Narf, on the interwebs, and I was playing Jesse, the Mechanomancer Automata, uh, somewhat human like thing. Maybe had a soul? I don't know. Person. Who knows? Person. 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 Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, you can catch me next on Friday for Black Void. Ah, nice. and it sounds really cool. I'm really Ooh. into the system. You should come check it out. Black Void is such thing. a fun system. Excellent. Well, I've been Eric at Modern Recluse on Twitter. You can find me here later tonight for Starlight Smoke. Big thanks, as always, to our patrons for supporting what we do. Uh, if you want to be awesome and do the same, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Tales and keep up to date on what we're doing on WolfleTales.com. Uh, and thanks to you, our viewers and fans, for tuning in. As always, stay charged and never play a drinking game with a booze hound, and don't violate your taboos. Good night, everybody.